between the visiting men or icebreakers and your port here on Prowlers. Jeremy is still out sick, so I was able to recruit the one, the only, Roger Bidon. <laughs> Thanks How are you doing? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me here, Brady. I yeah. appreciate that. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Love having you on. Um, so last night, if you don't, if you weren't here with us, the Prowlers started off a little sluggish, went in the first period down a goal. After that, though, they scored six straight, including a natural hat trick from Austin Federley. Mike Moroso put in two goals. You had goals also from Dalton Jay and Zach Zalkanich. And they played basically the whole third period on the penalty kill to not surrender a goal. Prowlers looking good so far. But it is February, that is the, the, the grindy part of the season where it starts to feel a little long, second game in three nights. How do you get through that grind of the season and how do you get up and get ready for the second game in three nights? Well, February is the toughest month of a season because you've been going along, you've been going along, you're not quite into playoff mode yet, yep. um, you're fighting injuries, um, you're fighting team unity because sometimes yeah. guys have been together for a long time, yep. you start to get on each other. Yeah, you just had the trade, uh, Brandon Contrato traded three guys who had been with the Prowlers since the beginning of the year and Gregorich fight for Strack, all sent to Battle Creek. A little bit of roster turnover, something the Prowlers really haven't had to deal with this season. Yeah, it's tough. T keeping um, team chemistry is a difficult thing to do, and that's yeah. where you really look to the leadership of your program or of your players. Your, your veterans have to keep everybody together, everybody pulling the same way. It's important for the success of the team. These are the dog days of the winter. Yeah, and Joe Pace suspended one game for last night for his spearing incident uh, when he fought Richard Pinkowski. Justin Portilla also had a tilt with him last night. And I do, do think it kind of speaks to Joe Pace having to do everything, be the player, be the coach, be the GM, to make the moves he's making and really keep a solid team core. You think having a player coach would kind of go against that, but everyone in that locker room seems to buy in what he's uh, preaching. Yeah, he's got a tough job. You know, he wears many hats. He's down here at the arena at all kinds of, you know, times, different days, different times, and he's putting his time in. And, and then to focus on his game, and focus on being a leader on the team, focus with the on-ice stuff, yep. the off-ice stuff. Man, he's got a heck of a job to do, and, and he, he does everything with drive the bus, I think. Yeah, basically, and uh, so for, you talk about from a player's perspective, from a coach perspective, how do you keep these players ready to go, and how do you keep them up when you are in the dog days of the season? You know, I think it, it's all about team chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I don't think it hurts to take a day off. Right. I don't think it hurts to get away from the game for a while. Maybe take 48 hours off and do nothing mm -hmm. and come back charged. Uh, maybe take the team out for team building, team yeah. unity. Just get them away from the rink for a while. Just let them relax for a bit and get their minds off hockey. And then on a, on a smaller scale, three games and three nights, game two, What's the mentality going into the second game of three nights? Well, it looks like the Prowlers had some momentum last night, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the score of the game. And I think it's important for them to come out early yep. and to, to establish themselves early, to uh, carry the play, and I think, uh, you know, get the other team back on their heels a little bit. You know, maybe be able to rest some of the starters coming in because Danville comes in tomorrow. They're fighting for second place. You mentioned you're not quite in playoff mode yet but you still have one eye on those standings knowing that Danville's nipping at your heels and you've been back and forth with them all season. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, February is that tough month, you know? Like I said, that's that in-between month. Yep. And uh, the playoffs are, are, are a ways off, so you're not quite focused on those yet, but they're in the future. Yeah. You know, they're in the back of your mind, but not the forefront of your mind. Right, you don't have the, you don't have it right there. You can't say, okay, we have four weekends left or whatever, so. Uh, Roger, why don't you take us through the starting lineups tonight? Who's uh, who's starting for the Icebreakers? All right, for the Icebreakers, we have on defense, number three, Desmartri Daniluk. Our other defenseman, number 23, Mark Steele. At right wing, number 21, Yari Hastuka. At left wing, number five, Alexander Morrow. And at center, Number nine, Nathan Farrington. And handling the goalie duties tonight, Frankie McClendon, number 31. For Port Huron, who do we have? For Port Huron, starting on defense, we have number 16, Brian Parsons. Starting on defense, number 17, Brandon Contrato. One of the newer members acquired earlier this week in that trade with Battle Creek. Starting at center, Zachary Zelkanich. 
Starting in as forward, number 91, Justin Pertillo. Also starting at forward, number 92, Dalton J. And doing the goaltending tonight, number 31, Chris Paulin. Yeah, you know, you mentioned talking before the game, looking at the numbers for guys like Chris Paulin. He's, he's played the bulk of the games. Him and Corey Simons, Blake Scott, played ter terrific last night. Chris Paulin kind of plays a different style than a Corey Simons. They're kind of yin and yang. When you watch Corey Simons play, he stays back in the net. He does well staying in the crease. Chris Paulin's not afraid to go out, be a little sporadic, try to cut down the angles. He will move around a lot as a goaltender. Yeah, you know, when you look at the two goaltenders, you're right. The styles are totally different. Where Corey Simons likes to play back in his net, yep. but he's successful at it. Yes. And he does it, and he does it well. It's not the type of goaltending I like, but he's the kind of guy that can do it, and if it's working for him, why change it? He's had success in, in it. You know, tonight, starter, I think we're going to see a little different game. Yep. I think we're going to see him move out and cut the angles down and make sure the shooter doesn't have anything to shoot at. Yep. You know, it's all about angles and blocking and saves tonight. It, 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 when they're playing more out of the net, you kind of rely a little bit more on your defense to get, get rid of that cross crease pass because you do leave it wide open for if you can get a pass across the ice from post to post. It's a lot harder to recover when you're farther out of the net. Oh, absolutely. And, and the team will adjust to that. Yep. You know, you got to play a certain style and you got to play your style. And the team is smart enough to know who's in that and what style they're playing. Especially if you have an aggressive goalie who likes to come out and challenge, then the defensemen know they got to take the weak side guy. Yep. All right, well, we will be right back here after the national anthem for Prowler Hockey against the Menor Icebreakers right here on EBW TV. Moments away from puck drop here in at McMoran Arena. The Men are Icebreakers are taking on the port here on Prowlers here. The second game in two nights for both teams. Prowlers now 6-1 and one against the Icebreakers this season. Roger, what do you want to see from the Prowlers? What are the keys to the game? What are you looking for tonight? Well, I think the key here is the start. Yep. You know, with the victory last night, um, the first thing that you know your opposition wants to do, they want to come out and take it to you yep. and show that last night was a fluke. Yep. If you can go out and you can set the tone and you can set the tempo early on, I think that sends a huge statement. So I think the first five to ten minutes of this game is important. Well, last night, the first five to ten minutes, it started off good for the Prowlers. Mike Moroso with a beautiful backhanded shot went far down. But after that, the next 15 minutes or so of that first period was at the Prowlers' end. So, they have started off slowly a couple times, especially against teams lower in the standings. Battle Creek, they've had a couple problems with starting off quickly. All right, we have Zach Zolkanich against Nate Farrington here at the faceoff dot. Prowler's going right to left. Icebreaker's going left to right. Portillo and Pastuca going at it already before the puck is even dropped. Icebreaker's win a pass there. It'll be cut up by Contrato, but Pastuca takes left wing circle, shoots, and it goes wide to the net. 
Steele tries to dump it in. Portillo playing physical here early, right off the get-go. He got into a, a big old brawl last night with, with Pinkowski. It's a pass there goes off the foot of Zach Zolkanich. Steele will take it back in the neutral zone. Zolkanich showing around. We have some physical hockey as Conway takes over the line. Slap shot goes to the left of the net. Contrato chips it up to Jay. Jay trying to get it out of the his zone. He flips it up and over. It's caught by a nice breaker. Neutral zone, they'll get it up to Fowler. Fowler's fighting with Parsons for it over the line, but we'll get an offsides call. 19-13 here to go in the first period. No shots yet on net. A couple things that I noticed. You're right. Physical start. Looks like both teams came ready to play tonight. And our goaltender, Fallen, that style we talked about, he's out cutting the angle down. Uh, two shots and both were wide because he was out of his net. Yeah, they're trying to pick the corner there as the Prowlers win the win the draw. Paul, and yeah, it comes way out of the crease. It's almost a controlled chaos with him at times, especially on a rebound or a scramble. Controlled chaos is good. Conway in the neutral zone. Now it goes back to Keenan. Eventually the Marysville native Dalton Young will take it behind his own net. Throw it back to Larry Vartiain in the Finland native. As now they get it up, they go past Federley. Graham will tip it into the zone, no icing. Him and Jurevic will fight for it. Graham, a little pass there out into the blue of the crease, but it's covered up by McClendon. We'll have an offensive zone draw, 18-43 here to go. Boy, Austin Federley had a heck of a game last night. Yes, he's been playing really well lately. Three hat tricks now on the season, and they've all came within about the last month or so. I'll tell you what, I've watched him over the last couple years, and he just is doing nothing but getting better and better. Yeah, it was a, kind of a unique situation where he had a hometown team where they could kind of almost redshirt him for a year or two and then as he learned to grow as he found a role he started playing with confidence and I think he's it's all his hard work and now he's scoring goals he's a big part of this team absolutely he is puck goes all the way down we will get an icing as it takes a weird hop off those boards uh, oh and the linesman <laughs> takes a fall just getting the linesman in yeah. it early that's all yeah the but those Zamboni doors, I swear that, that little lip there is getting worse and worse. Yeah, as a goaltender down at that end, you got to be aware of that puck coming off the boards like that. Um, I've seen many a goal scored. Goaltender looking over his shoulder. Puck ends up out in front of his net because of those boards. Left wing draw here. Jonathan Giuliano will tie it up. It'll go to the stick of Jurevic. Jurevic is in his own zone. Tries to get it across there. This is Luis Giuliano tries to get it up to Moroso. Moroso can't find it. Puck bouncing here in the neutral zone. Parsons trying to cut off Stuart Dant. He will not. Along the hash marks here. Parsons now in his own zone. 17.55 here ago in the first period. We have one shot on net as McClendon will cover it up. Another whistle here. That will count as a second, but not really a shot. A little bit of a slow start. I mean, the first shift was physical. Since then, we've had several whistles. I don't know if uh, that's the strategy to slow slow us down tonight, slow the prowlers down, you know, after the game last night, not sure. Yeah, not a lot of flow right now. Just try not to let the prowlers cycle it through. It's a weak shot there. Dalton Jay tries to pick it up. But yeah, no flow, no real feel of the game as Paulin will let it go, but that'll be icing. And another whistle. Yeah, another whistle just nine seconds later. It has been, yeah, very stop start. Icebreaker have been doing a good job, at least in the defensive zone, getting in the way of passes. Prowler's a very good passing team, and you see teams more and more trying to get in passing lanes. Sometimes the Prowlers are almost a little too passive. Draw will come to the left of McClendon as the Prowlers win it. Shot there from Contrato gets deflected before it gets to the net. Portillo turns and shoots, goes wide. Contrato by the hash marks throws it on net, and it'll be swallowed up by McClendon. 17.34 to go, and another whistle. You know, I really like Zach Zelkanich. Yeah. I love the way he plays. We've discussed this before. He comes and he brings it every night. You know, he's he's digging, he's out in yeah. front of the net, he's causing problems for opposing goaltenders. Man, I like his style. He's he's the you don't like to play against him. No. And you definitely no. can always hear Stas is a shot from Dalton Jay gets deflected. Zach Zolkanich, uh, he uh he does not hide his feelings. No. He will let it know for good or <laughs> For bad as the pass goes up to Zolkan and she's trying to split a couple defenders and Pastuka knocks him to the ice. It will be offsides. Portillo didn't like that. He's coming to the aid of his teammate. Yeah, that was a little bit after the whistle, Brady. Portillo has the blood flowing still from last night. Took down Pinkowski and didn't even take a hit. 
Portillo's one of those guys I don't think I'd want to mess with. No, no. Standing at 6'2", and uh, he's about all muscle. Yeah, he can handle himself. Yeah, and last year he was more of just a the, the fighter, the enforcer for the team. And now he's turned into a nice goal scorer. On the year of Justin Portillo, he has, let me look right here. Yeah, he has 19 goals, one of the one of the team leaders. And if you'd have told me that at the beginning of the season, I would have thought we were in trouble. But Portillo has turned into a really, really nice player for the Prowlers. Icebreakers take it up and over the line, left wing circle. That's Fowler. Fowler whiffs on a pass. Conway behind the net gets pinned to the boards by Zolkanis. Shabartiano will take it. Shabartiano with a long bank pass. They scored on one of these last night. Dalton Jay beats out the icing. Larry Vartianen, that pass, but on the other end, threw it from about center ice, banked it off the boards, and it went right in front, and the Prowlers scored because of it as we have a whistle. Yeah, that's really a, a set play, and you know, the, yeah. the forward's gotta know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, they make eye contact, as soon as they read it, they go. And that's a, an important play. If you can get in behind the defenseman, goalie's yeah. got to be on top of that. And really, as a goaltender, you're not expecting a bank pass from center ice behind you. Parsons dumps it in diagonally. Sokol will pick it up. Right hash marks, leaves it for Graham. Graham fighting for it. He's fighting over there. That, that was Newberg for the icebreakers. As it put, gets past Easterbrook, it's tipped deep into the zone. It's Crawford and Parsons jacking for position. Sokol has it now. Gets it up to Graham. Graham trying to get past the defense. Him and Federley could have a two-on-one. Federley takes it. Goes around the man. Shoots there. Saved by McClendon. 16-18 here to go in the first period. No goals yet here at McMoran Arena. Federley backhand attempt goes wide. Parsons shovels it in deep. Graham on that pass out from Faust. And Federley couldn't keep a handle on it. He was looking to do a, a nice little move there. I think he was trying to go backhand on the near post, but he just couldn't keep it on the tape. Boy, Graham and Federley on that shift worked well yeah, together, they didn't do. you? You're starting to find a little cohesion in two guys that have been together all year. And, and that's what you're trying to do when we mentioned uh, roster turnover. Absolutely. And one thing Graham did there, that when he gave the puck up to Federley, he went to the net and he took one of the defensemen with him. Yep. And that allowed Federley to cut across and take the shot that he had. Shot out in front there by Parsons almost gets there. Giuliano can't get everything on the shot. Back there, that is Weber. Moroso now, pass back to Giuliano. It's picked up by Weber. Weber shoots there, saved by McClendon. Puck out in front there. That's Danny Luck trying to pick it up. Pass gets cut off. That's Easterbrook. Battling in the offensive zone, Easterbrook gets it in deep. No one really able to control the play right now as Pestuka throws a long bounce pass, but it will be picked off by Easterbrook. Parsons takes it in his own zone, 15-09 here to go. Shots are 5-0 in favor of the hometown Prowlers. Dalton Jay waiting for some reinforcements and he dumps it in deep for Portillo. Portillo will take it along the boards. Back to Zolkanich, Zolkanich trying to get it up and out, or at least in front of the net. Now Portillo tries to get it right back to him. Perks, back to Daniela. Play has been almost exclusively in the icebreaker's end as Conway gets it in, and it'll be picked up by Fowler. He scored last night. Bartiani does a good job getting in front of the pass. Contrato behind his own net. We'll ring it around the boards to Portillo. Portillo and Horvath now fighting for it. Fowler coming to the aid of his teammate, Zolkanich will help Portillo. Along the near boards, Horvath throws in, Contrato gets in front of it before it can reach Paulin. Conway banks it off the boards, gets it out in front, Fowler not there to receive it. Portillo behind his own net being chased by Fowler. He gets it up to Jay, Jay at least gets it to the neutral zone so the icebreakers have to retreat. They'll dump it in deep and elect for a line change. Icebreaker's putting some pressure on now. We're having a hard time getting it out of the uh, the Prowler zone. Stewart Dan trying to get across the burger is now finally the Prowlers are gonna get it out of the zone there. Here's Graham again. Matt Graham left wing circle, shot gets deflected, and it lands right in front of Jay. Jay throwing the body around, something you don't see too often. <laughs> Matt Graham now on front, pass it to Federley. Federley can't hold on to it. Scramble out front, Jay shoots. It goes up and over, no. McClendon keeps it in front. That was a wild scramble. Hard to tell where the puck was, but the Prowlers still have possession. Young leaves it for Jay. 
Jay shoots it right out in front and hits the skate of Graham. And Graham will chase after it now. Icebreakers on their heels as now you have Newberg taking it into the zone, but a good job from a pair of Prowlers to get back on defense. That Brady, that whole offensive sequence started with Dalton Jay mm -hmm. making the offensive hit down low, yep. caused the defenseman to turn the puck over, and we had several scoring opportunities because of that. That play started because of Dalton Jay. Now for McLennan, when you have a scramble like that and you're not sure what the puck is, what's going through your mind? Uh, you got to get as big as you can. And you got to get as low as you can. You know, see if you can come up with that puck. But you want to, you want to get in front of as much as you can. Dalton Young will get it up there to that is Sokol, I believe. Puck goes back to Diaz in the young zone. Yeah, McClendon had to scramble for a minute. Kind of have to hope your defenseman help you out too. Yeah, it's the worst feeling in the world when you can't see the puck. Dalton Young trying to chase Barrington there into the corner. Now Federley chips it way up and out of the zone. Pestuka will pick it up, no icing call there. 12.47 here to go in the first period. There are no goals either side as Giuliano with a nice smooth backhanded pass up to Moroso. He just couldn't get on side in time. Pass up to Conway. Conway can't get there. Easterbrook will beat out the icing and the puck will come all the way back down to the icebreaker zone. 12.31 here to go in the first period. Shots are 6-0 in favor of the Prowlers. You know, you uh, talked about McClendon playing goal. He uh, He's a big fella. He moves out well, but I don't think he moves laterally real well. I right. think the, the idea for um, the Prowlers would be to get him moving left to right. Yep. Guy like that, you want to get him moving left to right. Um, that's not a strength. The strength is moving out. So right. I think that would be something to look at as this game goes on. Not too dissimilar from their former goaltender, Austin Rodebush, who I believe stood at six foot four. He is called up. He's in Roanoke of the SPHL right now. Similar style of goalie between McClendon and Rodebush. Parsons now behind his own net, loses the handle on it for a moment. Gets it up to Moroso. And you got Moroso Conway jousting for the puck. Parsons gets it out to the neutral zone. It's poked up to Moroso. Moroso, he scored twice last night, trying to make a move there. He almost got around three icebreakers, but the shot goes wide. Moroso, the former Fighting Falcon, yep. as the scoreboard just went out. Boy, Moroso, that was a one on three. Yeah. And he almost yeah. got a heck of a scoring opportunity. Yeah, there's no, uh, I don't know if it's just, no, the scoreboard has gone out, got unplugged. There we go. But Moroso will get to take a penalty. I didn't see the call. Did you see what it was? I missed that. Let's see what they end up getting it for. I just saw him go in the zone one on three. And almost get around all three yeah. guys. Must have been something after the play because I missed it. But two minutes on the board nonetheless for the, uh, for the Prowlers. Icebreakers will have a man advantage. They struggled mightily up a man last night. Icebreakers still looking for their first shot on goal. Yeah, and we're almost, we're over eight minutes into this game. A shot there finally on net is, is, cu is cut there by Paulin. As our PA announcer Austin Dunn says that it was two minutes for a hooking for Mike Moroso. Must have been one that went into the corner. The scoreboard going out kind of caught my attention for a moment. Yeah, I diverted my attention too. Yeah. But Paulin, that being his first shot and first save of the game, you know, as a goaltender, you like to get that first shot yep. early. Like to get into a rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. And you've seen the last couple games with the Prowlers. I would guess more often than not over their last mm, three weeks that the team who is outshot has actually lost the game. I don't know what it's been, but it seems like it's been quality over quantity in these Prowlers games recently, whether it's for the Prowlers or against them. Puck goes back into the zone as a pass goes right in front of the crease, but no one's there to get it. Horvath. Over there, that's Pinkowski. Pinkowski on net goes wide to Paulin. Fowler at the hash marks, turns around, leaves it for Steele. Steele being pressured by Graham, leaves it for Horvath. Horvath, a little give and go action with Fowler, can't quite connect. That was a nice give and go down low. You know, it looks like on their power play, that's what they're trying to do. Work mm -hmm. the bottom part of the surface, the bottom part of the zone, and use a give and go down low. Now does that work? Better or worse against a guy like Paulin who likes to come out of the net more? You know, that, that's a tough call. It's hard to change your power play and what you do right. during the course of the game. Some teams like to work over the top. They like to work outside on the top. Yeah. I think a guy like him who likes to challenge, you're better off working down low. 
um, because he is so aggressive. But once the guy walks out of the corner, he still is coming right out at him, and he's right out on the stick, and that's the way you play that. All right, we have 33 seconds left to go in the man advantage for the icebreakers. 10.31 left to go in the period. Farrington retreats it back to Danny Luck. Danny Luck in his own zone, being pressured by Jay. Taking his time is Danny Luck. Slowly getting it in his zone. Finally, Farrington will take it in. Danny Luck will recover the loose puck. Back behind the boards is Morrow. Morrow backhands it over to Pastuka. Pastuka shot on goal, goes way over the head of Chris Paul. And three seconds left to go. Prowlers look like they're about to kill their first penalty of the night. Oh, oh, oh. Only one shot on that power play, Brady. Yeah, that's, that's not what you want to have, especially when you had zero going into it. That is a wasted two minutes for the icebreakers, and now they have a little bit of a advantage here going into the zone. Danny Luck shoots there right into the glove, but it's loose. Couldn't hold on to it. Moreau tries to catch it and backhand it, but Moroso will end up with it. He's fresh after sitting for two minutes. Calling again, out of his net, out of the blue, making the save. A lot of changes here for both teams. Vartiano's keeping it in his own zone. 9.29 here to go in the first period. No one's gotten on the scoreboard yet. Giuliano will shovel it up to Portillo. Portillo up and over the blue line. Left wing circle. Back nice to Giuliano. Play. Giuliano shoots. No, oh, it's saved by McLennan. I don't think he thought he saved it. And Parsons' shot will be gloved, and that'll take us to our media timeout. McLennan looked back. I don't think he realized he made the save. No, I don't think so. But Portillo made a heck of a play there. That was one heck of a pass. And for a guy that doesn't play all of the road games as Jonathan Giuliano. The chemistry right there between Portillo and Giuliano, was, it was nice to see. Oh yeah, that was really nice. Um, Portillo coming into the zone, and it looked like Giuliano knew exactly where he was going to yeah. be, where they were going to throw the puck. Yeah, it was a nice play. Nice uh, scoring opportunity. It was, and again, I don't know if McClendon realized he made the save, because he looked back over his shoulder. <laughs> you know, I, I, the start of this game, what, the first 11 minutes, the Prowlers been controlling the play. They have. Other yeah. than the power play, um, the play has been in, you know, uh, the opponent's own most of this period. Yeah, they had the Icebreakers had one or two rushes where they've kept it in, but they haven't had sustained pressure. Oh, not at all. Probably just have been moving it around the zone. You know, they've tried to cycle it through a little bit, but they do like to take more of the quality chance than just trying to get anything on net. Yeah, they sure do. Which is good and bad. It can be frustrating for fans, especially when you're not scoring and you're, they're looking for the perfect opportunity. But then on the flip side, when it works, it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> Graham will take the draw for the prowess. He wins it. Easterbrook with a the shot there. Gets sticked away, but he'll recover his own loose puck. Shot there. Deflected before he can get to Federally. He was trying to tip it in. Graham getting it in front of McClendon. Icebreakers are now controlling it, but Graham uses the body to keep it in the zone. Easterbrook. Now back to Graham, his outstretched stick can't get it. But Federley will pick it up. Federley, puck will go back into the neutral zone. Horvath, back behind the net to Keenan. Keenan backhanded, trying to get it out of the zone. It banks off the glass and lands right in front of the icebreaker bench. Back behind the net now, Paulin will play it himself to Easterbrook. Puck flips straight up in the air, Fowler. Almost a high sticking call there as Parsons goes down to the ice. Steele keep it back in, right back to Parsons, who's jockeying for it. Conway will pick it up as Parsons was pinned to the boards. Scrum there along the near boards as the pass will go all the way down and that'll be icing. Danny Luck beats out Sokol, 8-12 here to go, 0-0. Shots are 8-12 in favor of the Prowlers. Prowlers have been, been, excuse me, have been doing a good job keeping the opponent out of the prime scoring area. You know, the shots that they've had haven't been real quality opportunities. No. And, you know, that's allowed for Poland to make some easy saves. Yeah, Prowlers had two shutout periods as Diaz's shot gets deflected. To end the game last night, they went in down in the first intermission, uh, two to one, and finished the game with a seven to two victory. So Prowlers have been playing stout defense. And again, I think they had 11 minutes of penalty kill in that third period last night, did not surrender a goal. That's a pretty good penny, penalty kill. It is. It is. There was uh, the other time when they went to Elmira in the shootout win, I believe they had, they went 9 for 9 or 10 for 10. I can't remember. It was a weird bounce. Out in front there, Citroen passed over to Jay, and they couldn't take, an op couldn't take advantage of the odd bounce. 
But no, that game against Elmira a couple weekends back, I believe they were about nine for nine and ended up winning in a shootout. I They're, remember that game. When their penalty kill is on, they are on. 7.23 here to go in the first period. Puck gets down low to Zolkanish. Zolkanish looking to find a man to throw it to. That's Contrato shoots and oh, he scores! No. Brandon Contrato, his first as a Prowler goes five hole between Frankie McClendon and the Prowlers are up one nothing. Boy, that's a goal McClendon would like to have back. Just a, a walk out from the corner, a shot, just beat him five hole. I don't know if he wasn't aware that that shot was coming um, or he just caught him off guard. It just didn't look like he was focused on that. No, that was out of some of the saves he's had, especially last night too when he played in the third period. That is a very weak goal for Frankie McClendon to give up. But Brandon Contrato, his first goal as a prowler, congratulations to him. The new guys keep making it work along with Sokol and Moroso. They have, uh, the acquisitions have been playing, paying dividends early. Well, give Contrato credit. He walked yep. out and fired the puck at the net and good yeah. things happen when you do that. This young now has it as he throws a backhand shot. It banks all, did it, it went oh. in. Oh. Oh. Young with a bank shot from the point. Oh. Oh. They're, wait, they're discussing it right now. The goal light went on. Dalton Young just get the easiest goal he'll have of his career. Boy, if he just scored, they don't come much easier than that. The goal I did go on, Brady. I yes. saw it go on, and the goalie looked behind him. Are they saying it went underneath the net? They're going to count the They're goal. They're going to count the goal. Dalton Young, with the easiest backhanded goal you'll see all year, makes it 2 nothing. We thought that Contrato goal was a bad one. Oh boy. That that puck came off the boards and it wasn't yes. really shot that hard. No. McClendon looked like he didn't know where it was. He went down into the butterfly. Puck hit him in the, the back of the leg yeah. and ended up in the net. And it wasn't even a hard shot. No, that is, hey, they don't ask how, they just no. ask how many. Dalton Young's very happy, he'll yes, take it. That, that adds one more for the Marysville native, his seventh of the season. That makes up for all those shots you take off the yeah. crossbar that don't go in where you have yep. the goalie beat. The one-timer from the point yeah. that you have the entire net and he <laughs> sprawls out. Absolutely. He, I don't I don't know. Duncan there for the icebreakers discussing with the linesman, but. Yeah, I don't know what they'd be talking about. The but. only thing is I saw someone gesture toward the side of the net, maybe saying it slid from the outside oh, in. Oh, underneath? And didn't, that's the only thing, but the, the net didn't come off the moorings at all. No, not at all. I do know that net gets a little loose, so I don't know if when he backed up, he hit the post and it came up. Yeah. Because I've seen that happen before, but either it, way, they're going to count it. I, they just announced giving the goal to Contrato. Contrato. Unless they, or unless they're still announcing the first goal. Yeah, that was at 12.45, so they still had to announce it. Portillo takes a slap shot, and it's saved by McClendon. Boy, that was an unusual goal. You don't see many of, like that here. No, no, not at all. And usually you'd see it at the other end off the Zamboni doors. Yes, yes. And you know, this is this is huge for the icebreakers. You know, you don't want to go down 3 nothing in the first right. period. Yeah, you uh, talked about getting off to a quick start. Well, 2 nothing about a three quarters of the way through the first period, that's a start. And two uh, of the easier goals you'll see all year. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, doesn't matter. The score is 2 nothing. Yep. They all count the same. Parsons now in the neutral zone will try to dump it in deep. Six minutes left to go here in the first period. They did give that goal to Dalton Young, Mike Moroso and Jonathan Giuliano on the assist. And that Brandon Contrato goal, Sage Citrone, in his fifth game in the Federal Hockey League, gets his second assist. A shot there from Graham gets gloved by McClendon. He made that one look easy. So you know, I didn't see McClendon play last night, but he, he's an awful flat. And what yeah. I mean by that, he's not getting much, much depth uh, with the shooters. You know, there he was flat-footed, faced the shot. He wasn't coming out and challenging the shooter. Um, it just, just doesn't look like he's challenging a whole lot tonight. Yeah, and the icebreakers don't seem very spirited right now. As Isaiah Crawford uses his speed, he tries to go around Paulin. Great job, Chris Paulin, coming out of the net to poke it away. Isaiah Crawford flies on the ice, but now going the other way is Bobby Sokol. 
Because now the icebreakers are covering. I'll tell you what, that poke check by Paul in there, yeah. that was phenomenal because you don't have time to think about that. You either go or you stay home. If yeah. you hesitate, the puck's gonna end up in your net. And he took the aggressive side of that and away he went and made a great poke check. He did, and again, we talked about it before. You get another guy like Corey Simons, not that it's wrong, but he probably would have stayed back in the crease and tried to make the save. That's just the two different styles. And having that yin and yang at goaltender, not knowing what kind of look you're going to get as an opponent, that probably plays in the Prowler's favor. Absolutely. And, you know, the forwards adjust to that, too. And your defenseman, your team knows Spastuka who's playing. Pastuka takes a shot. It gets padded away. Nice save. Pastuka can't get all of that one. And now Parsons throws us up to Jay. Jay takes it up and over the blue line. He'll dump it in deep. Ring it around the board. This is all Canich. Him and Steele fight for it. As Vartiana gets in the zone, he'll poke it all the way down. Zolkanich now behind the net line. Nice pass over there. Shot gets deflected. Good job that from, I believe, yes, that is the captain, Nate Farrington, who laid down on the ice to get in the way of that puck. Farrington made a really nice play there. Sold out. Nice, nice stop. And that, that negated a beautiful pass from Zach Zolkanich, who got it cross ice to the right wing circle, right onto the stick of Brandon Contrato. Fowler in the neutral zone gets pickpocketed by Vartianen. Vartianen takes it in the zone himself, makes a move back in, and Tevi scores! A move. Larry Vartianen with a thing of beauty goes top shelf and makes it 3 0 Prowler. <laughs> Brady, we were talking about the two previous goals being cheap. Yeah. There was nothing oh. cheap about that, that goal. That makes up for the other two because Larry Vartianen is the Prowler's number one shootout man. I guess. Did yeah. you see that movie put on the defenseman? Yes, he did. Then the goalie? Then backhanded top shelf. Vartiain in the number one shootout man, but he is a defenseman. And he is their go-to guy on, on shootouts. And you saw right there why. Vartiain an absolute thing of beauty. Gets his third goal of the season. But wow. Yeah, again, they all count as one, but that was a heck of a one. McClendon? Boy, he's looking around going, what just happened? You know, that poor guy letting in soft ones, giving up good goals. It's not yeah. a good night for him so far. No, Pro Prowlers with three goals on 13 shots. But Larry Barjan, ever since he came back from his collarbone injury that happened in uh, December, he has been amazing. He's been playing very aggressive as Young gets in the way of a shot there. Now Moroso tried to get it up to Portillo. Moroso will take it in the zone. Shot there from the former oh. Fighting Falcon hits iron. Justin Portillo now gets it deep into the zone. Giuliano chasing after it. Prowler's trying to blow this wide open here. It's Moroso skating. Backhanded shot there goes wider than that. Good job, Dalton Young. Shot there from Giuliano and a nice save there. Excuse me, that's Mike Moroso in the corner. Giuliano catches it, gets it on his stick. Pass won't go through. Berger, cross. Cross ice pass to Stuart Dan. It'll go deep into the zone, but Contrato will pick it up. 3.15 here to go in the first period. Prowler's up three to nothing. Two not so pretty goals, and then a beauty from Larry Vartianen has given the Prowlers a three nothing lead. Boy, if you're the icebreakers, the next goal in this game is huge. You don't want to go down four nothing. No, that, that really deflates you. And the, what the Prowlers can do, like we mentioned, they have to play tomorrow night. They have to play Danville. And which is going to be a big game when the playoffs come around come early April. And if they win this, that's a big one. They only have two more games left as Morrow takes it in right wing circle, tries to pass it back. Nice. Now going the other way will be Sokol. Sokol takes it up and over the blue line. Now to the point. Shot there, he misses, misfires. 2.31 left to go. 3 0 Prowlers lead. Federally now behind the goal line. Backhands it. Graham will pick it up. Tried to get it right back to Federley, but Farrington's stick got in the way. 220 left in the first. Danny Luck over the blue line. Shot there. Chris Paulin with an effortless glove save. He barely had to move it. You know, one of the reasons I think uh, the Icebreakers only have six shots is watch. The, the Prowlers have committed themselves to playing defense tonight. Yeah. If you watch, they have two or three guys coming back into the zone and uh, shutting down um, the Icebreakers. Yeah. You know, they have six shots. Not real high quality shots, but they've committed themselves right. to the defensive zone tonight. Yeah, and the Prowlers trying to get that stretch pass out of the zone. They're trying to 
all right, once we stop you, we're going. Yep. They're trying to leak a guy out, a guy like Dalton Jay, a guy like Mike Moroso, trying to slip him past the defense, and that's how they're opportunity to come in a steal shot, get sticked up into the net, and we'll do the faceoff all over again just six seconds later. See, I like that style Paul and plays. As you can see, he's out above the blue. That makes a shot from the point, an easy save. Yep. Just nice stick right up into the crowd. I don't know how many of their seven shots have come below the top of the circle. Yeah, they haven't had many in the prime scoring uh, uh, area, that's for sure. Parsons now fighting for the puck there along the boards. You have Weber fighting for it with Zolkanich. Both guys poking at it, Declan Conway comes away with it. He'll take it behind the net, but Easterbrook's there to lay a body, but a little backhanded attempt is covered up by Paul and a sneaky little pass there from Conway. Conway did a nice job. The only person that didn't bite on that was Paulin, yeah. the goaltender. Everybody else was flowing to the other side of the ice. Well, I, I was watching Conway. I didn't even realize he shot it at first. That was a really nice move, and Paulin had to be heads up on that one. Faceoff will come in the left, or excuse me, the right wing circle to the left of Chris Paulin. Newberg over to Stuart Dance. Stuart Dance shot goes way wide, deflected. Shot there. It was blocked by Paulin. Now loose out in front. Paulin can't quite corral it. Goes into the corner harmlessly, Paulin hugging the post. Pass goes out in front, Zolkanich doing a good job bodying up Isaiah Crawford, not letting him get a clean look at that puck. That's the best scoring chance they've had so far this game. Shot there from Newberg, goes oh, way yeah. up into the netting. And you have a guy going into the net, into Chris Paulin. Him and Young, I believe, were... Young's were gonna bodied. get the penalty. I think they're gonna take him for interference. They originally opened the icebreakers penalty box, but no, you're right. Dalton Young will end the period in the box. You know, we've seen the icebreakers come to life a little bit here. You know, as their best scoring opportunity as the, uh, you know, Paulin made the save, the yep. rebound came out, and they were attacking the net. You really need your defenseman in that instance mm -hmm. to not play the puck, but to pick up a stick mm -hmm. to help your goaltender out. You know, if everybody's battling for the puck, it makes it difficult. You want your defenseman to pick up a stick so the goalie can make yep. the save. Yeah, now shots are 15-11 in favor yeah. of the Prowlers. They're closing that gap. Icebreakers when the draw goes to Horvath. Horvath gets it behind the net where Farrington will get it. Trotto doing a good job pinning him against the boards, but Morrow comes away with the puck. Morrow back to Farrington behind the net. Paul and trying to figure out where the puck is. Farrington over to Horvath. Horvath at the point now. Along the blue line, shot there, goes off the skate of Graham. Goes way up and out into the stands. Someone gonna come away with the souvenir. 101 left to go in the period. 140 left to go on the Dalton Young penalty. You know, it looks like on this power play, as opposed to the first one, they're trying to move the puck to the top of the ice. They're trying to do more of an over the top type power play. Early on in that last power play, a lot was coming from the corner. Right. Yep, icebreakers definitely changing up the style as we are waiting for the linesman to drop the puck. <laughs> Barchianen gets it in the corner. Contrato will go pick it up, try to get it out of the zone. Does a good job avoiding a couple icebreakers, but Horvath does a good job keeping it in the zone. Prowler's not afraid to try some offense. Oh, There's nice a shot save. from point blank from Nate Farrington is saved by Chris Paulin. And they're gonna get a penalty there on Morrow. Morrow gonna go to the box, I believe, for slashing. We'll see what the official call is. Slash to, for Morrow, and just 40 seconds into the man advantage for the Icebreakers, they'll give it right back. Well, have four on four hockey to end the period. Was that a heck of a save by yeah. Paulin? Oh yeah, from point blank. That puck came right out to the top of the crease and he had to be sharp. And again, Brady, there's that style of him coming out yep. right on the stick and uh, it takes the, the net away from the forward Trying to, trying to score. It does as the, as the icebreakers take it up. That's going to be Fowler. Fowler in the corner now. Varchianen tries to go get it. Fowler falls down. Dalton Jay going to take it the other way. Dalton Jay trying to get past Perks. It's around one. Left wing circle. He goes down, but almost keeps it on his stick. 21 seconds left to go in the period. Diaz. Over there to Perks. Perks back to Diaz. Diaz shot there, saved by Chris Paul, oh. and he'll cover it up. 
Boy, we've seen the uh, icebreakers come to life here in the second part of this period. Shots now are 15 to 13. Yeah. They're coming alive. You, you know, they know the next goal is important. You go down 4 nothing. that's a tough, tough hill to climb. It is, but with only just under 14 seconds left to go in the period, they might have come to live life a little bit too late as the Prowlers will be able to go in and reset, get some fresh yeah. legs back in them. And they did just give away a power play opportunity. The, the key here is not to give up a goal in this 13.9 seconds. You want to take that three goal lead into, into the period, into the intermission. Easterbrook will get it off the draw. He's fighting for it. Moroso has it. Eight seconds left to go. He's getting it up. Try to get it. So goes. So goes down. Mike Moroso has an opportunity. Oh, he can't hold on to it with one second. Now the buzzer sounds. Moroso always had a chance to steal one. He's upset with himself. But after 20 minutes of play, the Port Huron Prowlers are up 3-0. Goals from Brandon Contrato. He went five hole. Dalton Young on a, well, a pass that hit off the back of the board and somehow hit off the back of Frankie McClendon and went in. And then a beauty of a goal from Larry Vartiainen. He went top shelf backhand going around. Gives the Prowlers a 3-0 lead. We will have four on four hockey when we return here to EBW TV. Stay with us right after these messages. We'll be back with second period action between the Men Ice Breakers and your Port Huron Prowlers. Would you like to protect your family's financial security and make a difference in your community? Woman's Life Insurance Society is a different kind of insurance provider, but a better kind of different. You can get the life insurance you need to protect your family's financial security with the added benefit of helping those in need in your community. If you're thinking about life insurance, it's time to think differently. Choose planning ahead and giving back. Choose Woman's Life. Learn more at womanslife.org. For those of you ready to rock, we have a show for you. 21 Gun Salute, an explosive tribute to ACDC, is taking over the McMoran stage on Saturday, February 29th. Undoubtedly one of the best ACDC tributes ever assembled, they'll take you through the entire history of the band, from the early Bon Scott years to the 30-year tenure with Brian Johnson. It's 21 Gun Salute, an explosive tribute to ACDC, February 29th at the McMoran Theater, sponsored by TMA Electric. Tickets start at just $24 and are available at Ticketmaster.com or the McMoran box office. Adventures await you at the award-winning Doubletree by Hilton, Port Huron. Experience the breathtaking view of sailboats and freighters framed against the background of the impressive Blue Water Bridge, all from the comfort of your elegant guest room balcony. While you're here, enjoy the convenient amenities at our heated pool, fitness center, and on-site restaurant, freighters eatery and tap room. Planning a trip to Port Huron to cheer on the prowlers? Call the hotel and ask about our special prowlers fan rate. A stay at the Doubletree by Hilton, Port Huron is the perfect way to enjoy a prowlers win. What does best mean? People use the word all the time, but don't really consider its power or potential. At McLaren, best is a belief system, a culture, an expectation, a standard that we hold ourselves accountable to. Best means using the latest technology so we can get people back to their everyday lives. And best means just being by someone's side, using your heart as well as your brain. To us, best isn't an adjective we use for effect. It's the powerful backbone of a philosophy. Because when it's your family who needs help, if it's your loved one on that exam table, what would you want for them? Exactly. We believe in one thing at McLaren doing what's best. My name is Matt Graham from Rancho Cucamonga, California. I'm a forward, number 51. My favorite college memory is uh, probably the first season when we won, I think it was like 27 games in a row. From the Blue Water area, hundreds of years of history are preserved, and the Port Huron Museum is taking a few weeks out to organize and sort through some of their treasures. What we basically did was took 
everything out of here, which was very daunting in itself. It took about two days. As everything went out, went and was stored in the other room. That's where they were able to give the item a little bit of cleaning if it needed it. Uh, make sure that the items entry uh, in Past Perfect was up to date. That's the database we use. Add that new picture from a professional photographer who has uh, very generously volunteered his time to help us out. Make sure all of that was entered in. It's sent upstairs where we're able to generate a barcode for it, which is something we were just never able to do before. Technology finally caught up so that way when everything comes back in here you could pick up an item scan the barcode and learn you know when was this item donated what was its significance some of the favorite things I found uh, it's actually a patent medicine machine from the 1850s and it uses the power of electricity to cure people it's a, a magneto it's pretty neat the idea was the patient would hold it and the doctor would turn a crank and pass a small current of electricity through the patient to cure what ails them at least in like 1854, that was the idea. Uh, one of the cool things we have is an entire collection from an American soldier who was part of the polar bear expedition. The dog tags, a helmet, a uniform, actually some of the currency that they had picked up and kept as souvenirs along the way. So this is a pretty obscure military expedition in U.S. history, uh, but it was a small American expeditionary force at the very end of World War I, about 1919, so just over 100 years ago. They had drawn soldiers from Michigan and other cold climates specifically because they knew they were sending them to Russia and wanted a soldier who be prepared for those kind of conditions. One of my favorite finds we found was a giant scrapbook full of wanted posters and wanted ads from about a hundred years ago, from the 19 teens. Uh, there's some really interesting ones. There are deserter ads from the army that were posted around town because the soldier was, you know, originally from Port Huron. All sorts of things. One of the ads that I really enjoyed was uh, from a, a wife who was looking for her missing husband. He said that he left and uh, there was a reward for him dead or alive. So, I guess she really wanted him back, um, one way or the other. My passion is with the collections. I got into this into this job so that I could um, touch the old things. And then it's, it's just, I'm lucky that that's what I get to do. It's really a celebration of doing right by the objects. We've had a great team of volunteers. We've had um, probably about 10 volunteers almost every single day. Just everybody is playing a part and so many people are doing a great work for us. A lot of the Thomas Edison stuff was really, really cool. Uh, that and all the old pictures that just, you know, you know from where we grew up and uh, just getting a chance to, to see what it used to look like. Finding out, you know, looking at stuff I've never seen before and uh, just your one chance to actually see the behind the scenes of the museum. Ultimately, the whole point of this whole process is that when we're done, we have a better understanding of what we have, what we don't have, where everything is, uh, and it's we use these items to tell local stories. Organizers say artifacts they found like the Magneto and the scrapbook of wanted posters from the 1910s are just the tip of the iceberg of some of the fun things and historical artifacts here at the museum. And they look forward to sharing it with the community for years to come. For EBW TV, I'm Annie Naraki. Hey guys, Austin Fireley from Port Huron, Michigan. I'm a forward and I'm number 19. Uh, my favorite thing about playing hockey is just the smell of the rink, something yeah, it's unique to this game. Uh, it's awesome playing here growing up. Um, it's even better now that I'm pro, playing in front of all your family and friends. It's, it's a special experience. This story is sponsored by Women's Life Insurance Society, in 2002, the abduction of Elizabeth Smart was one of the most followed child abduction cases of her time. Ms. Smart's story gripped the nation after she was held captive for nine months as a young teen. Though this, through this traumatic experience, Smart has become a strong advocate for the recovery programs and legislation related to child abductions. Next Monday, February 10th, a local audience will have the chance to hear her story during the monthly town hall series. Smart is set to deliver a captivating message of hope, not only about her personal story, but also about overcoming adversity, the process of recovery, and not allowing one's past to dictate life's future. The program is set to begin at 10.30 a.m. at the McMoran Theater in downtown Port Huron. Limited tickets are still available for the presentation. You can contact the McMoran box office. This story brought to you by Marysville Tire and Auto, Marysville's premier tire dealer and tire repair shop. 
Leisure Living Management, a Grand Rapids-based senior living community operator, broke ground this week on a 43,000-square-foot assisted living project in Port Huron. The company has now announced that they are ready to move forward with plans for a second St. Clair County location at 1003 Brown Street in the city of St. Clair. According to Neil Cray, CEO and president of Leisure Living Management, the project will have a variety of room options in the assisted living wing as well as 15 specialized memory care units. Cray said the community will have a total of 40 apartments with lots of common space and amenities. The St. Clair facility will be the 29th location for Leisure Living. A groundbreaking for the project is set to take place in March. The Port Huron location being developed near Lake Huron Medical Center will have 44 units and is expected to be operational in the spring of 2021. One of the most stunning things about this area is our water. However, that does mean that there's extra danger, which is why two agencies are coming together today to train for cold water rescue. The Coast Guard is doing joint training with the Port Huron Township Fire Department. We are trained in ice rescue. We do ice rescue every winter. And the Port Huron Township Fire Department, we're teaching them some techniques right now of self-rescue. We're also showing them that if they have a, a victim in the water, how to use their gear that they have, their rescue equipment, to be able to help get that victim out of the water and get them to safety to shore so they can get to the EMS. As folks may know or not know that the fire department also responds to other calls besides fires, medical emergencies and in occasionally rescues and that could be a rescue from, from ice. In the case of sledding or ice fishermen or snowmobiles, any, any cold weather sport is subject to going through the ice. So when you first fall into the ice water, it's going to be a complete shock to your body. You're gonna take a quick gasp of air which is the most dangerous point. We follow what we call a 1101 rule. So it's uh, one minute of getting your breath under control, getting your breathing under control. As soon as you fall, you're gonna take that quick, quick gasp. You wanna try and make sure that you get that breathing under control and be able to figure out what's going on. Cause you're about to do a lot of exertion to get yourself out of that ice. Then you have 10 minutes of meaningful movement, which you see in the video of how they're getting themselves out, using their elbows to try to pull themselves up, using their feet to help propel them and then getting that knee up onto that ice shelf and rolling towards good ice. You have about 10 minutes to do that, and then you have about an hour until you lose consciousness. So this is really important because most times the fire department is gonna be the first ones on scene. So it's good for them to know what's gonna be going on. They don't have the same gear that we have. They have a little bit of different gear that they're wearing. Uh, so a lot of times when we go on scene, if we're not assisting the victims, we're gonna be on shore and ready to assist the firefighters if they need help. So with this, they get to see the gear, that, gear and techniques that we use being that we are fully trained in this to uh, the national level. We get to see the gear that they use and the techniques they use so that this way we know what they're doing out there. Plus even the gear ourselves, if either one of us get in trouble, we know what the gear is and how to get the gear on and off of each other. This way we can assist with that too. Fortunately in the township, we don't have a lot of occasion to run to these calls, but that makes them all the more important to be prepared for because they're a high risk evolution that we do at a low frequency. In today's times, very few fire departments have the staffing or the equipment or uh, the, the, the sheer numbers of staff to handle all these rescues single-handedly. So the more cooperation, collaboration that we have together, uh, that makes us more efficient, more effective to make our community safe. Certainly folks like to ice skate, they like to ice fish, but always have in the back of your mind that, that safety has to be something you're thinking about in the clothes you wear, the plans you make, and obviously the time of year. With these suits, they might keep us warmer than the average person. We still get cold, we still lose the dexterity. So it's even unsafe for us to be out there through this. If you can stay off the ice, please stay off the ice. While both of these groups are working hard on their rescue methods, it's important to remember that the rescue is dangerous for them as well. So the best bet is to not need a rescue at all and avoid the ice because as they say, no ice is safe ice. For EBWTV, I'm Annie Naraki. My name is Paul Arnott. I've been here for the last three years, formerly number 69, but I'm 77 this year. We got the best fans in the league. They're rowdy, they're crazy. It's an intense atmosphere. Every time you walk into McMoore and come check out a game. In the VG's parking lot in Marine City, a building has stood vacant for 10 years. However, a gym has decided to give it a new life. We took over the movie gallery here. We're a standalone building in the Kmart Plaza. We actually had a prior location down the street um, 
things came up that we found that we had to move locations and so my number one priority was to take care of our members and we found this um, location had a great conversation with the um, first commercial realty they own the property here and they acknowledge that the building's been empty for over 10 years and that they were excited that an existing business um, was going to come down and fill it so they worked us a deal that we couldn't refuse and we jumped on it we were changing the culture like i wanted to find a way that we could appeal to every style of worker outer you know whether you do a bunch of cardio or you do crossfitting or powerlifting i wanted to get you know in a small market like this everybody counts and so i wanted to get every every culture under one roof and it's like, how do you do that and I've been saying it religiously, but you give them a clean place and you give them some nice stuff to be proud of. Everybody's in here with different goals, but the one thing in common is they're all here to be a better them. Basically, when you join, you get a free eval with me. With the eval, what I do, I put them through a workout, find out what their goals are, and go from there. Well, usually when I first get my client, I have them warm up on the treadmill, bike, whatever is best suited for them. And then from there, we focus on their goals and put them through their routine. Usually I specialize in free weights, so most of my clients deal with free weights. You know, when people come in, like, absolutely, I'd love to have you, of course. You know, what can we do to make this happen? And that's just being human with people, you know? So I just, when people come in, we hope that, that they um, see some value in what I'm showing them and you know we'd love to have them even if you come down just to walk around if you want to get on the hydro massage bed or if you want to do the tanner free just to try it out we're all learning this stuff together so you know you don't have to come down and enjoy it and by only being a member you can stop in say hi and we can go from there we have a uh, Facebook page Marine City Health and Fitness we also have a website um, you can call us on our phone at 810-765-4900. The building's been sitting for over 10 years, and for somebody to come in and do something positive with it and give it back to the community, I think, you know, in a small town like this, it's a big deal. And I didn't even really realize how big of a deal it was, you know, until people started coming in and just saying, hey, like, thank you, and I'm just trying to, you know, just give us all something to enjoy. Our local towns are definitely seeing a revitalization in recent years, and now Marine City is no different and owners hope this gym will continue to help the area flourish. For EBW TV, I'm Annie Naraki. Second period starting. Prowlers up 3 nothing behind goals from Brandon Contrato, his first as a Prowler. You also had Dalton Young bank one off the backboard and somehow find the back of the net. And a beautiful goal from Larry Bartianen. So, what do you think the keys are for the Menor? They're down 3 nothing. They have to come out fast, don't they? Well, I'll tell you what, the second half of that period, they started to put it together and caught a little bit, the, yeah. the Prowlers back on their heels a yeah. little bit. Shots 15 to 13. Yeah, and at one time that was a wide margin. Yeah, I so, believe it was 15 to 5 at its widest. At one point. So I think what this next goal in this period is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. It's going to be huge, and, you know, they need to come out and they need to score that, that next goal. Otherwise, it's a four-goal deficit, and that's a tough deficit to come back yeah, from anywhere. Especially knowing that you have the bus ride home. I mean, men are still only a few hours. Like, they're still probably getting home not too late. But after you lose a game 7-2, to two, that thought definitely gets back in your head, especially when you, I think they've lost nine out of their last ten. Well, they really need something positive to happen. I mean, they lost last night 7-2. to two. They yep. outshot Port Huron pretty handily. Um, they're starting to come back, and, you know, they're down 3 nothing still. So... From their perspective, they need something good to happen. They, they need a bounce to go their way. They need something um, to get the momentum because, you know, it's, it's tough. It is, it's very tough for them, especially when you keep losing. And Prowlers need this win to try to further that gap between them and Danville. And if you let the Prowlers get up four or five goals, that's when they're going to start playing the, the clock-killing game. Yeah, it, it, especially since the Prowlers have dedicated themselves to the defensive game for yes. the most part of that period. Uh, they've been coming back in their own zone. They've been taking forwards, have been coming back, picking up guys, back checking. Um, you know, if you get a four goal lead, and boy, they keep playing that style, that's going to be hard to overcome. It, yeah, it will. And the icebreakers kind of ruined a good opportunity they had just 30 seconds in, excuse me, 40 seconds in to their man advantage. They take a slashing penalty and 
have to play four on four hockey, you're gonna have to play a little bit down a man. That yeah. kind of kills the momentum. Yeah, you know, anytime you take that um, penalty when your team's on a power play, uh, it takes you off a power play in a game like this. That just hurts. And that penalty was well away from the play. You know, it wasn't a scoring opportunity that was taken away. Right. Um, it was just a penalty in the center of the ice that doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to happen. And that's a frustrating one. That's how the game's gone. But we are getting ready here for second period action between the icebreakers and your prowlers. It is 3-0 in favor of Port Huron. Icebreakers win the draw, will take it back into their own zone. Fowler has it in the neutral zone, Zolkanich pressuring. It goes wide, Parsons will get there before. Perks, but he'll shoot it way up into the zone. They're gonna say it was tipped, so no delay of game penalty here, 11 seconds in. Yeah, somebody got a new souvenir. Yeah, that went flying. Luckily it hit the uh, the, the ramp there up next to the that Dale sign. Otherwise, that was coming in hot. Yeah, that was moving. Zach Zolkanich will take the draw against Perks. Lyon's been taking his time dropping the puck. Now Parsons has it. Back there to Contrado. Contrado right back to Parsons. Just have to kill 20 more seconds as Perks falls down. Prowler's gonna have numbers if they hurry. Parsons up to Contrado. Contrado right wing circle. Goes around a man, can't quite get it back on his stick. He, the puck beat him, but Contrado could not. Eight seconds left to go with the penalty shot. There he closed on Jay. And it Scored. goes to the back of the net. Was it off? Oh, I think they're going to say the net was off, Brady. No goal. They're not giving it to Dalton Jay. They're saying the net came off the moorings first. Oh, Brady, Brady, I, I disagree with this call. 100%. If anyone knocked it off, it was McClendon. Absolutely. The goaltender knocked that puck, or that the net off after yes. the puck was in the net. Yes, and if he didn't, it was simultaneous. We'll see what they call here, but McClendon, the puck was in the net. McClendon's left pad knocked the net oh, off. Oh, there's that's a horrible call. Boy, I don't agree with that call that at all. That is a horrible call. It didn't affect the outcome of the play, even if it was no. simultaneous. Oh, that is and, just awful. And it was the goaltender that kicked the net off and himself. Now, I don't agree with that call at all. Prowler's going to have 40 seconds of five on four hockey as Young comes out of the box. Pastuka has it in his own zone. Now Dalton Jay, who just got robbed of the goal, will take it at center ice. So Cannon is trying to keep it in. Swing stick, but it comes back to Parsons. 25 seconds left in the man advantage. It's 3 0 Prowlers. Young. Pass up there to Jay. Leaves it for Graham. I don't think Graham was expecting it. Young has such nice hands. He does. He does. And he's been getting better every single game he's been playing. As Graham takes it. Left wing circle. Takes it in deep backhanded attempt. Sticked away by McClendon. Two seconds left to go in the power play. And a slap shot there from Contrato. Gets blockered up into the air. Stuart Dant will knock it down. Throws it off the boards. Young trying to keep it into the zone. Prowlers would have been offside. They had to retreat. Icebreakers now would be offsides. They go back to the neutral zone. Citrone gets it up there to Contrado. Contrado horseshoes it around. There's that bounce again, Brady. Oh, yeah. I, I was following it. Yep. And then I did. I, I should have accounted for the the uh, Zamboni doors as the puck's now deep in the Prowler zone because of that that weird lip on the doors. Yeah, McClendon had no clue on that one. He no. kept waiting for the puck to come out the other side. I was waiting for it to go to Contrado's stick. <laughs> yes. 17.58 here to go in the second period. It is 3-0 Port Huron. Contrado gets the puck in deep. Sokol chasing after Horvath. Horvath in the corner. Graham has it now. Keenan. Martianen will finally recover in the neutral zone and he'll set things up. Taking his time. He was being pressured there, but he gets it around. Berger is still pressuring Vartiainen. Gets it down to Graham. Graham nice over to Easterbrook. Pass. Easterbrook right wing circle. Shot out in front. Sokol tried to tip it in, but McClendon did a good job coming out of the net. 17-18 here to go. It's still 3-0 Port Huron. 
Easterbrook just throwing the puck at the net creates a scoring opportunity. It wasn't anything hard. He threw it low and at the net. And you saw it made the goalie control the rebound. Yeah, and you had an opportunity there. Sokol was right out in front along with Graham as Sokol tries to take it over the line. Doesn't quite make it. Federley has to keep it in the neutral zone for the time being as Danny Luck now has it. A long pass there gets to the right wing. So shot there goes off the blocker of Paulin. Boy, Paulin looks like he's in his own tonight. He's tracking the puck so well. He is. He's 14 for 14 with saves. Prowler scored three goals on 18 shots. Pass goes up to Giuliano. Giuliano back to Sokol. Sokol along the hash marks. It's knocked down by Pastuca. Giuliano tried to get it out in front to Moroso. Moroso pokes it into the corner. He tries to get it around Danny Luck. He won't be able to. Farrington. That is Pastuca now. The former River Dragon. Icebreakers traded him a while ago. Parker, Moscal, and Pastuca were the big ones in that deal. As Giuliano is now pinned against the board, Mike Moroso has it. He gets it up to Portillo. Portillo takes it over the line. Fakes the shot, take it down into the corner. Goes back around that shot there, save. It's still loose out in front. Portillo will recover it along the half wall. Back behind the boards it goes. That is Moroso and Steele. So Candace just fully Steele to get that. Oh, excuse me, that was Giuliano. Pass out to Moroso, Moroso, it almost just banked off his skating in. 15.40 here to go in the second period. No goals in the second, but the scoreboard still says three nothing. Parsons back to Contrado. Contrado gets it knocked away by Newberg. The two 17s collided in the neutral zone here. Portillo has it. Oh, he would have been able to get it up to Zalcanis, but he couldn't quite keep it on the tape. Newberg shot there, sticked away. Good job by Brian Parsons saving a goal there. Nice defensive play. That was what I was talking about, lifting up sticks so you can't get the rebound. Yep. Great defensive play. Thomas Stewart Dant had a look like to be a for sure goal, but Brian Parsons does a great job lifting the stick and helping out his goaltender there, keeping it 3 nothing. And you know, that's a shot Paul and might want back to control the rebound. Yeah. Kind of left the rebound in a bad spot and his defenseman bailed him out. What a great play. We have a we had a penalty, a delayed penalty. We'll see who it's on. Dalton Jay was controlling the puck for a moment. He started to go up ice, but Brian Parsons is gonna get two minutes. Boy, I missed that. Did you see what happened there, Brady? I did not. 14.50 here to go in the second period. Prowlers will go back on the penalty kill. The only other game right now around the Fed, the Columbus River Dragons are leading the Battle Creek Rumble Bees. 1-0 at the end of the first period. Battle Creek playing better. Yanni Liarakos, the former Prowler, scoring in that game. The puck's loose in the crease, as that was number 15, Fowler, who went down. Brings it around Easterbrook, trying to clear it out. Horvath does a good job getting in the way. Perks, across there. Shot there from Fowler. Fowler hops over Varchianen, and hit. the stick hit Varchianen in the head. Right in the head. Now, I know that was accidental, but you still have to be in control of your stick. Absolutely, 100%. I don't know why that's not a penalty. It was right in front of the official. It hit him square on the head, and Vartianen's going to come to the bench. He's in pain. The trainer's going to come check him out. Well, you know, that was accidental, but you still have to be in control of your right. stick. And that was clearly a stick to the helmet. Right. When, if you accidentally trip someone, it doesn't make a difference. No. Sorry, it was an accident. Yeah, no, it's you still hit him in the head. 125 left to go in the penalty kill for the Prowlers as they get it over the hand of Diaz. Looks to kill a little more time. Vartianen, who was down for a moment last night, was holding his right knee. Looks to be, looked to be fine. Nice Ooh. pass out in front of Federley. Federley shoots. It's gloved by McClendon. He can't hold on to it. Federley had a great chance from right out in front. There's Matt Graham to Federley. That connection's been looking good all night. Shots 20 to 15 in favor of the Prowlers. Federley now shot there, gets patted away. Graham trying to get it right back to Federley, can't reload it. Boy, Tim Perks just gave the puck up Nate in his Ferrington own zone. Nate now in the right, hand, the right wing circle gets saved by Paulin. 50 seconds left to go in the man advantage, 13-40. Number 16 for the yeah. Icebreakers had the puck, had control of the puck on a power play and gave it away. Yep. You can't, you can't do that, you no. just cannot do that. Prowlers have done a pretty good job this year scoring on the penalty kill. 
And they almost got another one right there. Austin Federley had two chances. Well, he's got great hands too. Do you see what he did with that pass? Yes, and like you said, he's just been getting better and better as his time as a prowler. Contrato, Young, you got Stuart Danton there fighting for the puck. Pastuka's trying to jockey for a position. Morrow skates away for a moment, trying to find the puck. Prowler's content to just let this penalty tick off the clock. Morrow finally comes away with it. Pass over to Horvath. Horvath shoots. It gets lifted by Jay, and it goes into the net. He will have a draw with 13-14 here to go in the second period. 24 seconds left to go in the penalty kill. As far as the Prowlers are concerned, they can take that puck and keep it in the corner yeah. against the boards for about another 24 seconds. Yeah. They'll be happy. They have no qualms about that. Parsons in the box right now. He got two for tripping. As a clean win for the icebreak goes all the way down. Dalton Jay trying to use his speed to get there first. Danny Luck does manage to get position as he gets it back to Horvath. Horvath, backhanded pass. They're going to have to hurry to get another rush. Ten seconds left to go in the man advantage. Pastuka in neutral ice. Up to Stuart Dan. Young chasing after it. Young in the corner. Stuart Dan, pass over there. Dalton Jay. If he hurries, he'll have a break, but he's been on the ice a while. Over the blue line, Dalton Jago goes around a man. He has to look out in front, backhanded attempt, weak shot there, but he was being defended well. That was number 18 for the icebreakers. That was Henry Berger. Henry Berger made a nice play. He D did. Dalton Jay was at the end of the shift. He was tired. Yeah, you could tell he didn't have those, those quick legs. He needs to catch his breath right now as Portillo takes it at neutralized, up and over the blue line. He gets around showing a little speed right there. Portillo now down behind the boards. It's Giuliano coming away. The pass out in front oh, there. Nice oh, play. great opportunity for Contrato for his second of the night, but he can't finish it. Portillo across. Shot there from Contrato. Saved by McClendon. 12 one here to go in the second period. You know, a couple of comments. Uh, McClendon seems to be put that first period behind him, and he's coming out, and he's playing a pretty good second period. Yep. But the problem with the uh, Icebreakers power play right now is they can't seem to get it out of their own zone. Their no. defensemen are struggling, and half their power play was spent trying to get the puck out of their own zone. That's been the story all night for them. You remember the first one, they only had one shot in their first penalty, or their yep. first power play. Absolutely. Giuliano on the dot can't win the draw. So now it's Steele in deep. Moroso putting pressure on him. He rings it high off the glass. It hits a stanchion, pops up. But Isaiah Crawford trying to use his speed to get it into the zone. He takes it up over the blue line. Tries to go across ice to the right wing circle. Well, Brian Parson pokes it away. He's a very stellar defenseman. See how, how the Prowlers have yep. committed to their zone? They playing did. defense now in their zone? Now they have numbers going the other way. Portillo there trying to get a pass out in front. Moroso almost had an opportunity. Well, when you have guys like Brian Parsons, who does not get a lot of points. He doesn't score a lot of goals. But where he comes is he makes things happen in his own zone by starting it off, making the defensive play. So he might not light up the score sheet, but he's just as responsible for a number of goals as the goal scorers are. Absolutely, a good offense starts from a good defense. You take care of your own zone, you're gonna get scoring chances. Puck comes back to Rob Easterbrook. We have an even 11 minutes left to go in the second period. Setting it up there, pass up to Sokol. Sokol looking to find Federley. Federley going around Danny Luck. Into the zone he goes. Shot there from Federley. Gets blocked before it can reach McClendon. Sokol doing a good job of retaining possession. That's Matt Graham with it now. Matt Graham he tries to throw it behind the net. Sokol will pick up the loose puck. Now over to Federley. Federley out in front of Graham. No, can't go. Sokol behind the net. Prowlers with a lot of pressure on now. Sokol shot from point blank. Won't happen. Prowlers can't get it out of the zone. Or excuse me, the icebreakers can't get it out of the zone. Prowlers doing a great job, an onslaught of pressure. It's Fowler's trying to take it in, left wing circle, a shot that's nowhere near the net. Now Parsons will stick it out of the zone. Icebreakers don't seem to have an offensive identity right now. No, they do not. And that Graham line is playing very well right yes. now. They have put a lot of pressure on. I don't know how much time they spent in their own zone through the 30 minutes they've been on the ice. That was a really nice shift they had. They moved the puck well around the zone. They got scoring opportunities. Um, boy, oh boy, they're putting pressure on. They, they keep doing that. It's just a matter of time before they put the puck in the net. Shots 24 to 16 in favor of your Prowlers. Citrone can't win the draw. Keenan gets it up. Crawford trying to use his speed. 
Yurvik now in his own end. Gets it up to Crawford. Young flips it over. Crawford sticks all Canich. Sticks it over to Citrone. Contrado. Puck just sitting there in the face-off circle. They'll end up going all the way back into the icebreaker zone, Yurevic. This has been a pretty quick period, not a lot of whistles so far. Kind of good flow of the game as Moro's hustling to get it. He gets there before Parsons can. Parsons trying to pin him to the boards, he leaves it for Farrington. Keenan now, shot there, gets swallowed up by Paul and we'll have a whistle. Yeah, you're right, there's a lot of flow to this period. Uh, unlike the way the game started, the first five minutes there were several whistles. Um, this period's been going by quick. There's a lot of flow to this game. Up and down action, goaltenders making saves. Yep. It's been a good period so far. It does seem like both teams understand that this next goal is a big one. And they're both playing, like you said, men or knows. If you go down 4 nothing, that basically ends, ends your hopes, Abs barring a major comeback. And the Prowlers know if Menner gets a goal here, that, that'll give them some life. Absolutely. And, you know, the icebreakers, they're, they're power play. Boy, they've had a couple opportunities, but when you can't get the puck out of your own zone, it's hard to score goals. Yes, it is very hard to score goals when you can't get the puck out of your own zone. They do have 17 shots, and Chris Paul has stopped all 17 of them. Well, how many shots have they had this period, Brady? I believe I they've believe only had five shots this period. I can double check that for you, but I believe the shots are 15 to 12 at the end of one. Okay. So through but, 10 and a half minutes, five shots. Right. That's not a recipe for success. And you had said it. What's their identity on offense right now? They don't really have one. No, they really don't. They're struggling to find their offense. All right, it was 15 to 13. They only have four shots this four period. Four shots, Probably okay. Probably out shooting them nine to four this period. They haven't had a quality opportunity yet. No, they really haven't. Let's see if they can get one here off this draw from the right wing circle, the left of Chris Paulin. Farrington wins it. Shot there, gets deflected. One of the reasons they don't have a lot of shots is Prowlers have been getting in the way of the puck too. Exactly, they've committed themselves, like I said earlier, to playing defense tonight. That's been a big difference. Steel, Steel's shot, or pass, excuse me, will go into the Prowler bench. Prowlers will get an offensive zone draw. They'll send a new line out. Giuliano Moroso and Portillo come over the boards. And you know when uh, the icebreakers are able to get a shot, you know, uh, Paulin's been there. He, he's standing his ground. So it's been a tough offensive night for them. Yeah, the only other opportunity they really had was when Brian Parsons had a nice stick lift off a rebound. As Contrato takes a slap shot there, it's loose out in front. Portillo was trying to get there, but he was being boxed out by Mark Steele. Nate Farrington over the blue line, it goes. Around Parsons. Parsons gets it up to Portillo. Portillo over to Giuliano. Giuliano over the line, left wing circle. Along the hash marks now. He'll backhand it now behind the net. Portillo, backhanded shot there, still loose. Moroso's there. I think that's Giuliano with him. Portillo now in the corner. Leaves it for Contrado. Contrado, the former Rumblebee, required earlier this week for the package of Strack, Pfeiffer, and Gregorich. Contrado. Here we go. Up to Moroso. He's got an opportunity. He's got to get around Diaz. Moroso shoots there and it's saved by McClendon. Good job by Diaz cutting down the angle. He didn't give him a chance to make a move. Diaz is one of their better defensemen. And McClendon read that real well. That's yeah. something he didn't do well in the first period, but he came out, cut the angle down because he knew the options were limited um, coming down the wing. And he had his defenseman helping him out. Yeah, you know, he did an amazing job there. Now Matt Graham will take the draw there. He loses it to Newberg. Morrow hustling to get it. Easterbrook trying to keep it in the zone. Easterbrook throws it back to Young. 8-11 here to go in the second period. Prowler's still up 3-0. No one's been able to score in this period. Crawford throws it on net from the hash marks. Over to Yurvik. Yurvik, not a lot of traffic out in front. Backhanded attempt there. Not on net. Newberg jockeying for it. Outstretched stick of Young as he pins Crawford to the boards. Diaz, shot on net. Crawford tried to tip it in from a low angle. Puck in the corner. Icebreaker's elected to at least get one guy off the ice. Bobby Sokol will take it into the zone. He's trying to get it around Yervik. He gets it to Federal, he throws it on net. Matt Graham trying to clean up the rebound. He won't be able to. Seven and a half minutes here to go in the second period. Icebreaker's looking to make this a three to one game. They are down, have not scored yet. Paul has been perfect. 19 shots, 19 saves for the port here on Netminder. 
Sokol over the blue line. Federley with a slap shot hits the side of the leg of Keenan. Buckled his knee for a minute. In the neutral zone now are the icebreakers. Fowler, right wing circle. Oh, big hit from Rob Easterbrook. He tried to dangle, but now we're going to get a penalty on Zach Zalkanich. He's not happy about it. You know, that's one of the first times Isaiah Crawford was able to get in behind yes. the uh, Prowler defense and created a scoring opportunity. But prior to that, if you look, we had three guys. The Prowlers had three guys in front of the net, all committed to playing defense. And it's hard to get any offensive going when your team is playing that way. And it's, and it's a lot easier to crowd the net and basically say you're not getting a shot through when you're up 3 nothing. Yeah, it sure is. That three-goal cushion dictates how you play. Well, another power yep. play opportunity here. Dalton Jay's going to try to make a move. He almost had a one-man opportunity. I, don't, I didn't see the delayed offside. I thought Dalton Jay took it in the zone himself. Turnover almost there. Now is Newberg left wing circle shot right oh, into the glove nice. of Chris Papalin. That was probably his best save of the period right it there. Was. And he stood tall there and made it look easy. Yeah, he did. He got caught a little deep in his net on that shot, but he was still able to come up with the save. Like I said, he's tracking the puck well tonight. He's seeing it. Yeah, his first game back since injury, that injury down in Columbus. As Dalton Jay's going to chase after him. He wants an opportunity. He wants another opportunity to the goal. He shoots there, block it away by McClendon. Graham keeping it in the zone, and here it is. The puck in the icebreaker zone again while they have the man advantage. 125 left on that, by the way. Icebreakers can't score when they're in their own zone. No, <laughs> it makes it a very difficult task. Neutral ice now. Newberg has it, takes it over the blue line. Goes around Moroso and Parsons. Along the hash marks. Rattles it around the boards. Contrato tries to get it all the way in deep. He does. McClendon playing it. Moroso pressuring him. In the corner now is Perks and Moroso. Moroso behind his, behind the, excuse me, the Menor net. Just playing keeper right now. 45 seconds left. Don Young takes a shot there to the chest of McClendon. Just over five and a half minutes to play here in the second period. No one scored in the second frame. It is three nothing port here on Leeds. The puck has been in mentor zone more on their own power play. Yes, it, it really has. They just don't seem to have an identity. And no, Jay's gonna have uh -oh. a breakaway. Oh, he can't get to the tape. He would have had a basically a, a penalty shot style goal or opportunity and it just couldn't find the back of his stick. 15 seconds left to go in the Zolkanich penalty. To say the back end of that power play is struggling is an understatement. It's been bad for the icebreakers, and it's probably a big reason why they haven't been winning lately. Jurevic on the blue line. Over to Stuart Dant. Zolkanich is now coming out. Shot in there close from Fowler, and they score right as Zach Zolkanich comes out. Icebreakers are making this a game. It's 3-1 Prowler's lead right as Zach Zolkanich comes out of the box. You know, the uh, Prowlers got caught. You notice the, the, the middle of the ice was wide open. A couple of the defensemen weren't in position, left a man wide open, and that's one of really the only time we've seen that happen tonight. And, uh, you know, they made them pay. You break down in the defensive zone, and the puck ends up in your net, and that's just what we saw there. That's a big goal, Brady. It is. It is, and they finally, hey, they just took one shot. Shots are now 30 to 21. They have a little bit of life in this game now. Stephen Fowler scored last night as well, one of their two goals. And now they're going to try to take it in here. Going around there, the icebreakers pass over there, and a, and a delayed penalty coming. Probably going to go right back on the penalty kill. Boy, Brady, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, this referee has saw some things that I haven't been able to yeah, see they, in, I mean, in putting our guys in the box. Uh, I just don't. I just don't know. Penalties are pretty lopsided right they, now. They, they are, and. You can make the case, I mean, you saw Larry Vartianen take a stick basically between the eyes. Again, accidental, but that doesn't matter when it comes to penalties. And, and Dalton Young got an interference call early on that he was just making a hockey play, in my yeah. opinion. You know, the puck came out in front of the net, and that happens how many times a game? Right. It's very selective. So right after the Prowlers kill, well, they technically killed the penalty, 
Yeah, Prowlers are five have five penalties. The Icebreakers only have one. Yeah, it's Prowlers it, only have 40 seconds of power play time tonight. Fans are not happy with the officials. You can hear them yelling out. The East Upper Rowdies are not happy right now. No, nor should they be. Pass <laughs> over to Pastuka. Back to Fowler. Fowler. Down low the shots. Newberg. Newberg. It's sticked away by Paulin. They say that was for roughing? Wait, elbowing. Elbowing, okay. yep. Elbowing. It, it was an elbow. That I didn't see. No. I must have missed it. Pastuka in his own zone. Passes up there, that's to Horvath. Horvath gets it up to Newberg. Fowler now, backhanded attempt, can't get it out in front of the net. So Kanich will take it. Puck slides into the neutral zone, just under four minutes now to go. 120 left to go in the man advantage for the Menor Icebreakers. Dmitry Daniluk now in his own zone. Trying to make this a one goal game. What a shift of momentum it would be if they can convert on this power play. This is a big couple minutes. You know, with only four minutes to go in, in, in the period. Yeah, going to that locker room down a goal is a lot different than going down two. You feel a lot more confident. And you saw the Prowler score four goals in four minutes last night. Fowler now has it at the blue line, gets it down to Newberg. Newberg along the hash marks back to Fowler. Cross there, Danny Luck swings and misses on a, sh a shot attempt. The recovery is saved by Paul and as Federley will take a slashing attempt to get the puck all the way down into the icebreaker and end. That's nice work by Austin Federley to win the foot race to that puck. Federley did a good job there selling out. As a long pass gets to Fowler, but right there was Brandon Contrato to get in the way. Prowlers were in definite need of a change there too. That's why that play was so big. Now Dalton Jane picks the pocket. Him and Matt Graham have it. Dalton Jane shoots. It goes over the head of McClendon. I don't know if it hit off the top of his mask or not. 10 seconds left to go in the Easterbrook penalty. Jay will take it back in his own zone, dump it all the way down. Prowlers with a big penalty kill with two and a half minutes here to go in the second period. See, in McClendon, that's oh, what he wasn't doing man. in the first period. He came right out on the stick and yep. had nothing to shoot at. Mm -hmm. he's, he's picked up his game from the first period. He's playing a good second period here. Well, you can play the what-if game all night, but if McClendon doesn't give up those two bad goals in succession, you're talking a 1-1 <laughs> hockey game right now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's the thing about being a goaltender, Brady. You make a mistake, everybody in the bar knows about it. Yeah, Moroso gets it behind the net. Yeah, McClendon's probably really wish he could have that back. He's been playing well ever since, really, those two goals because there's not much they could do about that Barchianen goal as Morrow is offsides and they call it way late. They were about ready to get it, a shot on net there. And, you know, that's just the nature of being a goaltender. You know, a forward can make a mistake. And you know I'm a little biased. Yes, a forward yes, you can are. make a mistake, and not everybody knows about it. But if a goalie makes a mistake, more often than not, the puck ends up in your net. Well, yeah, everyone, everyone is paying attention. It's like a kicker. Yeah. Every, no one knows if the left guard makes a mistake except no. for the really big football people. And a, a turnover oh. there to Crawford. A lot of people would have saw that mistake had that resulted in a goal. Yeah, absolutely. But no, only really the the very keen eye hockey people will realize, oh, he didn't back check very well. That led to a goal. But Fortillo gets a pass up to Moroso. Moroso over the blue line to the right wing circle. He shoots there. He scores! Mike Moroso answers right back. 4-1 Prowlers. Beautiful, beautiful pass by Portillo there. He put that right on the stick in the neutral zone. And a great, great finish. What a play at a big time in this hockey game. It is. That kind of squashes the momentum. Kind of last Sunday when the Prowlers were playing Elmira, we feel like we're on the opposite side. Yes. Start to get a little bit of momentum. And Mike Moroso stays as hot as ever, gets his third goal of the weekend. He has been an amazing free agent pickup. The former Fighting Falcon does a great job there making it 4-1. Nice finish. And that's the key to that play is finishing. And obviously he did a tremendous job with just under two minutes left in the period. That yep. goal is huge. That's a that's what I like to call a deflator as Dalton Jay takes it in the zone. He tries to get around, shoots, it's, it's blockered away by McClendon. Yeah, that's a deflated cause one. Because the icebreakers finally get their goal. Yep. They're starting to go around as Jay has it in the right wing circle. Pass back, can't be handled there. That was Citrone. Yeah, they finally get it. They finally get the goal they've been looking for to make it a two-goal game. And Mike Moroso 
makes it a 4-1 game. And deflator is a great term to describe that goal. Because they, they were working so hard, finally get it, and just an amazing goal there by Mike Morosa. But you're right, Justin Portillo's pass is the reason that happened. 40 seconds left to go in the second period. Puck comes out in front. Danny Luck can't hold on to it. I think he was looking to shoot before he had the puck on his stick. Yeah, he was. Moroso chips it into the zone. Barchianen tries to get it out and shot right to the stick of Citrone. Zokanich jumping over the blue line. He has 20 seconds to work with. Into the corner now is Zokanich. Pass Zokanich. out front. Dangling a little bit out there, Zolkanich is. It was. He, big man showing off his hands. Ten <laughs> seconds here to go. A couple moves there. Back to Morrow. Morrow shoots there. It's loose out in front. But Poland does a good job covering up. There's 3.4 left to go in the second. Prowler's looking to take a 4-1 lead into the locker room for the final break. Boy, that was a big, big moment in this period. Yep. It was a 3-1 game. The uh, um, Icebreakers had just gotten another power play. Momentum's starting to shift, and the Prowlers come down and make a great play and score. You're right, that's a deflator right there. Brandon Contrato and Dalton Young are officially getting the assist, but that's not right as the buzzer sounds. Justin Portillo very clearly threw that pass up to yeah. Mike Morosa. Oh yeah, so, he put it right on the yeah, tape. Yeah, that's gonna get changed. As at the end of two periods, each team gets a goal in the second frame, and we'll go into the locker room at a four to one score. Stay here, right here on EBW TV, as we'll have an exciting finish to this Saturday night showdown between the Icebreakers and Prowlers. We'll be right back after these messages for third period hockey. For those of you ready to rock, we have a show for you. 21 Gun Salute, an explosive tribute to ACDC, is taking over the McMoran stage on Saturday, February 29th. Undoubtedly one of the best ACDC tributes ever assembled, they'll take you through the entire history of the band, from the early Bon Scott years to the 30-year tenure with Brian Johnson. It's 21 Gun Salute, an explosive tribute to ACDC, February 29th at the McMoran Theater, sponsored by TMA Electric. Tickets start at just $24 and are available at Ticketmaster.com or the McMoran box office. What does best mean? People use the word all the time, but don't really consider its power or potential. At McLaren, best is a belief system, a culture, an expectation, a standard that we hold ourselves accountable to. Best means using the latest technology so we can get people back to their everyday lives. And best means just being by someone's side, using your heart as well as your brain. To us, best isn't an adjective we use for effect. It's the powerful backbone of a philosophy. Because when it's your family who needs help, if it's your loved one on that exam table, what would you want for them? Exactly. We believe in one thing at McLaren doing what's best. I'm Justin Portillo. I'm number 91 for the Prowlers from Toledo, Ohio. Uh, I love playing for this team because it's a great group of guys. They're my, I call them my brothers and I'll do anything for them. I got their back, they know that. Well, I grew up in Toledo, Ohio. I uh, played uh, competitive hockey in Michigan growing up pretty much my whole life and then I made it out east to play uh, juniors and uh, went to the University of Maine and played college hockey there and then um, made it, came full circle and made my way back here to Port Huron. Um, God is good and I'm just happy to be back in, in, with the Prowlers.
Adventures await you at the award-winning Doubletree by Hilton, Port Huron. Experience the breathtaking view of sailboats and freighters framed against the background of the impressive Blue Water Bridge, all from the comfort of your elegant guest room balcony. While you're here, enjoy the convenient amenities at our heated pool, fitness center, and on-site restaurant, freighters eatery and tap room. Planning a trip to Port Huron to cheer on the prowlers? Call the hotel and ask about our special prowlers fan rate. A stay at the Doubletree by Hilton, Port Huron is the perfect way to enjoy a prowlers win. Would you like to protect your family's financial security and make a difference in your community? Woman's Life Insurance Society is a different kind of insurance provider, but a better kind of different. You can get the life insurance you need to protect your family's financial security with the added benefit of helping those in need in your community. If you're thinking about life insurance, it's time to think differently. Choose planning ahead and giving back. Choose Woman's Life. Learn more at womanslife.org. A group created to help those facing serious addiction, Hope Not Handcuffs, continues spreading throughout St. Clair County on their mission to help people recover. We started here in 2017 down in Frazier, Genesee County, Lapeer County, and kind of the same initiative. What it does is twofold, helps those struggling with addiction and also helps deface some of the stigma that the police officers have as far as they just want to arrest people and put them away when really this is a, a way to say we're, we're willing to help. We understand the disease of addiction and we're willing to help. We have uh, over 30 angels angels in the area, so we built our angel force up before we could launch. An angel, when they get here, does initial screening, gives the, the person some comfort items, granola bar, water, candy, in the wintertime, maybe some gloves, some socks, a blanket, something for some comfort items, and then helps them do a, a navigate their way to treatment. The program is launched February of 2017, and we've helped over 3,830 people uh, through our chapters, and that's about nine chapters. So we have about uh, a little over 90 police departments statewide that are participating, and so uh, we're catching fire here so unfortunately we say we're looking for Gen for St. Clair County to pick up but uh, we, it's not the, the joy of it but we're looking to help a lot of people in St. Clair County any way we can. Slowly but surely we've, we've started you with Yale then we went to Port, uh, Port Huron City uh, then we went to Clay Township now we're here at the Sheriff and we're looking to continue just keep adding them as we go. We've been working with Hope Not Handcuffs since the very first week of January. The Hope Not Handcuffs program is important because we understand that this opioid crisis that our nation's facing can't be solved by arresting people. We want to provide alternatives, a safe, easily identifiable place for people to seek treatment. What I felt when I came through the doors was a lot of fear. A lot of, uh, I don't know, like what's going to happen here, you know, um, am I going to be sick because I'm going through withdrawals, whatever have you. And the biggest part of it is like when the angel came into the factor of it and made me comfortable, like gave me some candy, some water, um, a, a, a blanket to put over my shoulders because I came right off the streets, right? So that was the biggest thing for me is like having somebody that cared there for me. Right now we have had um, three that we met at the Port Huron Police Department and then we've had four online. They can go to the um, Hope Not Handcuffed website and do their application there and then an angel reaches out to them and works them through the rest of the process. But we would really prefer they come into the police departments because the police are our friends. We're always trying to collaborate with other community agencies so that we can help as a whole. Um, there's oftentimes a law enforcement part of handling drug addicted people and, and drugs in itself, but to help those individuals get out of that cycle is a very important thing. We're here to help them. We understand that they've, they're have they dealing with this addiction and they want help. We want to help them get that help. They'll be anonymous, nobody's going to know their name, and we'll just try to make sure that we're that conduit in place for them to go to get that help when they can get it. The St. Clair County Sheriff's Department becomes the fourth law enforcement agency in St. Clair County to join with Hope Not Handcuffs, and organizers hope to spread further throughout St. Clair County in the coming weeks and months. For EBWTV, I'm Annie Naraki. I'm Matt Robertson from uh, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Uh, it's my fourth year with the Prowlers, and love being back here in Port Huron. It's a great city. Uh, beautiful place to be and uh, wouldn't want, rather be anywhere else than here. A lot of good memories here. We've had a lot of good runs. We've been close. Um, I mean, I've made a lot of good friends while I've, I've been here. Uh, a lot of fun road trips with the boys on the bus. Um, I mean, it's just been a great time since I've been here. So.
You never know when you may be called on to save a life, but a few basic skills can help you stop the bleeding and save a life in an emergency. National response time for uh, ambulance or first responding agency to arrive is anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. So with you being the person that's already there when the accident happens, you're the one that's gonna be able to initiate care and actually make a difference before we ever can get there. Even if you're just slowing the bleeding, you're still giving them more time. This can be a little anywhere. If you're at home and um, somebody does something even as small as just trips and falls and cuts their leg, you know, they land on uh, cement cinder and it, it cuts their leg open, you, you can stop that bleeding and slow the bleeding. Um, if you're out and about and somebody's in an accident and you see some severe bleeding, maybe they broke their arm and have an open wound with it, you can make that difference. And in the case where um, that hostile event situation, like in Las Vegas, Nevada, when they had the Harvest Festival, this initiative was already out there. And because this initiative was out there, an ambulance was taken over, and the civilians stripped that ambulance of supplies so that they could help those who had been injured. When you're packing an, an open wound in a preferred way, it's taking the bandaging material by actually pushing that material inside the wound and filling that wound up with the material and then continuing to put more on top and applying that pressure. It's, some people will call it well-aimed direct pressure, but you're putting more pressure over a larger surface area and it'll help control the bleeding a little quicker and a little more effectively. So the process, once you get the tourniquet out of its wrapper and you're gonna slide that over their arm, their leg, or wherever it is you're trying to apply the tourniquet. And you're just gonna pull it as tight as you can and continue to wrap around the arm. Then you're gonna grab a hold of the windlass chuck which is, just looks like a big straight stick, and you're gonna keep twisting this. Once you get that to where the bleeding stops, you're just going to set that windless chuck in that little C-clamp, and then just continue to wrap the rest of your tourniquet around to secure it. If you're gonna throw together a home kit, I would say that first of all, you wanna have your ACE wrap, which is just your general thing, but you're gonna want clean gauze, uh, rolled gauze. You're gonna wanna have um, possibly an Israeli dressing. Um, and a tourniquet. Knowing the skills to stop the bleed are very important because uh, primarily if you ever find yourself injured and unable to get a hold of help right away, um, it's self-survival. You're, you're going to help take care of yourself. But a lot of the context of what we talk about in here is not only helping yourself, but helping your neighbor. Um, when you find somebody else in trouble or being the true first responder, you know, it's not the people in uniform that go out and get paid to do it. it it's going to be you who is close by when something bad happens. If they want to take a class once a month, I do them here at the Parks and Rec at Palmer Park. They can get a hold of Port Huron City Rec, and it's a free class. There's no charge whatsoever. I encourage everybody uh, to get one of these classes in because uh, the life you might save is your own, but it also might be uh, your wife or your child. I, I think we're very responsible for trying to, to take care of one another. And if I think if, if anybody shows up when somebody's hurt, and they take it upon themselves to help that other person. I think that's a very noble thing. From the skills of applying pressure, packing and applying a tourniquet and having a life-saving kit, you can go from the sidelines to saving a life. For EBWTV, I'm Annie Naraki. My name is Jackson Panch. I'm from Kenai, Alaska. I'm number 72, and I'm a Ford on your port here on Prowlers. I love the Prowler fans. They're absolutely contagious. They get us going feed off their energy, love going around banging sticks on the glass, getting the guys' attention. The corner over there with the tailgater guys, they're absolutely awesome. We love playing here just because the fans alone. This story brought to you by Marysville Tire and Auto, Marysville's premier tire dealer and tire repair shop. The city of Marysville and St. Clair County Community College, also known to many of us as SC4, entered into a 50-year intergovernmental agreement at Monday night's Marysville City Council meeting that will allow the college to expand into a southern footprint while sharing facilities with the city and its residents. According to Kirk Kramer, SC4 Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, the college is initially looking at two athletic facilities using two existing Marysville parks. During a presentation to the Marysville City Council, Kramer suggested Morton Park on Busha Highway could be the location for a collegiate soccer field and track, while a softball field at Marysville City Park could be used by the college's softball team with added improvements by SC4. 
Kramer said future plans involve more than sports, though. He said for the college, this is more than a soccer field. It's about collaboration. He also said expansion to create a South Campus footprint. They anticipate that as they work together with the city over the years that they'll continue to evolve together. He also mentioned a potential increased partnership with RISA in technical education and partnerships that will be beneficial for the college and other community partners as well. Gary Fletcher, who is Marysville's city attorney, added that he felt the partnership would also be mutually beneficial. He said the city couldn't do all of this with everything else it has to do, and the college at the same time cannot do it without the real estate. So together, Fletcher said you can get it done and amplify it by a whole lot what you could otherwise have done. So uh, according to Fletcher, he thinks the partnership will be great. The term of the agreement begins February 1st. At that point, the college and city would have 60 days to determine agreed upon locations for the college's future athletic facilities. SC4's Board of Trustees will also need to agree to the deal. It's expected to be on the February 13th board agenda. Hey, my name is Brian Parsons. I'm from uh, Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and I play defense. And uh, I love playing for the Prowlers because it's just such a great atmosphere, and I uh, love the coach, Joe Face. Um, well, so last year I actually played in uh, Watertown, New York, and then I got traded here midway through the season after I got hurt, and it was kind of a crazy experience because it was the first time that's ever really happened to me, and honestly, it couldn't have been any better because they embraced me as a player and as a person, and they brought me right in like I was a part of their family. A group created to help those facing serious addiction, Hope Not Handcuffs, continues spreading throughout St. Clair County on their mission to help people recover. We started here in 2017 down in Frazier, Genesee County, Lapeer County, and uh, kind of the same initiative. What it does is it twofold, helps those struggling with addiction and also helps deface some of the stigma that the police officers have as far as they just want to arrest people and put them away when really this is a, a way to say we're, we're willing to help. We understand the disease of addiction and we're willing to help. We have uh, over 30 angels angels in the area, so we built our angel force up before we could launch. An angel, when they get here, does initial screening, gives the, the person some comfort items, granola bar, water, candy, in the wintertime, maybe some gloves, some socks, a blanket, something for some comfort items, and then helps them do a, a navigate their way to treatment. The program is launched February of 2017, and we've helped over 3,830 people uh, through our chapters, and that's about nine chapters. So we have about uh, a little over 90 police departments statewide that are participating, and so uh, we're catching fire here so unfortunately we say we're looking for Gen for St. Clair County to pick up but uh, we Ladies and gentlemen, please out in section 15 row B the historic Dave Peabody he is celebrating his birthday night happy birthday Dave he is 77 years old Hello and welcome back to third period action. Here we are just over two and a half minutes away from the third period between the Menor Icebreakers and your port here on Prowlers. But first we're gonna go around the league and check some scores. A kind of surprising one, oh, it just changed. Down in Columbus, the Battle Creek Rumblebees. Right now led by former Prowler Jared Pfeiffer who came to them in the Brandon Contrato trade are tied at three aside with the Columbus River Dragons. Out east, the Danbury Hat Tricks are up 1-0 over the Thunder. Excuse me, and still staying out east, the Watertown Wolves have a 1-0 lead over the Elmira Enforcers. Elmira had been red hot. Watertown took them down last night, looking to take them down once again. <coughs> Excuse me, something in my throat. Um, anyway, so with about two minutes left to go, you have a 4-1 lead and you're playing a big game Sunday, probably the biggest of the weekend. How do you balance the, okay, let's kill the clock and get to tomorrow with fresh legs with the let's stay on the attack and don't let them back in it? You know, I personally don't think there is much of a balance, to be honest with you. I think if you got an opportunity to pick up points, you got to do it. And I think when you start to try and figure out a balance is when it can cost you and the other team can gain momentum. I think you just go out and play 
without even having tomorrow in mind. Okay. You just need to go out. You need to keep doing what you're doing, um, and you need to keep pressing the play and scoring goals. I, I think you don't worry about this two points or this three points yeah. um, until this game is over, and then right. you worry about tomorrow. You take it a period yep. at a time. I mean, maybe if you score a quick goal or two and you get up 6-1, then you can start take it over the red line, dump it in. Take it over the red line, dump it in. But Prowlers have played well, and they have been playing mainly defensive this, this whole game. So it wouldn't be much change if they just sat back a little more and, uh, and held back in their own zone. Yeah, no, and you'll probably see more of that this period from the Prowlers because, like you said, they do have a game tomorrow. Yep. And that's one way to conserve energy is just to play defense, yeah. throw everybody in front of the net, and clear the puck out of the zone when you can. But the problem with that is, with the way the penalties have been going tonight. Yeah, 5-1. You know, to one. For a game that the Prowlers have been mostly in the Menor's zone, it's it's strange to say that they've committed five penalties to Menor's one. Yeah, it sure is. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just part of the game. Officiating is part of the game. Uh, the only thing you can do is just keep playing your game and play over it. You just got to keep playing. We are getting ready here for third period action. Prowlers and Icebreakers back on the ice. Prowlers in their home black uniforms, their primary. And the Icebreakers in their road whites. I, I actually really like their road white uniforms. They're very clean and crisp. And for a broadcasting perspective, they're very easy to read. Yeah, I agree. Those are sharp uniforms that they're wearing. And I do like the logo that they have. Uh, the logo's pretty sharp. I'm not sure. I, I've always liked the... Uh, the powder blue color scheme. I think that's a clean one to use in uniform. Yeah, I agree with you. It's sharp, it's good looking, and uh, I think it's a, a jersey the fans would like too. I yeah. would think that the, the, the sales behind that would be pretty good as well. Yeah, the pro I like the Prowlers too. I like their red ones better than their black ones, but the black ones are fine. Not, I'm kind of indifferent about the stripes down the side, but in any case, in the faceoff dot, you have Nate Farrington and Zach Zalkanis will take the draw, taking it as Dalton Jay and up over the blue line. A quick opportunity for the Prowlers, but it gets poked away there. Shot there from Parsons goes wide of the net. Contrato trying to keep it in, but he'll elect to retreat as Morrow tries to throw a cross-ice pass. It gets tipped as it gets to Pastuca. He would have been off sides anyway. In their own zone are the Prowlers. Pass comes to neutral ice. Berger back to Steele. Bank pass to Morrow. The puck gets chipped way up in the air, and it's caught by Berger. In his own zone is Berger, 19-28 here to go in the third period. Prowlers up three on the icebreakers here on Saturday night. Jay over the line now into the right wing circle. A shot goes parallel with the goal line. Dalton Jay is just such a smart hockey player. He is. He is, and he, he doesn't have a lot of size, but he makes up for it with his smarts, and he... He avoids a lot of hits, but he has from time to time thrown the body around. Yeah, he has. And in that play there, he had not real good offensive opportunity. Takes the puck, just throws it in deep, knowing the situation, knowing yep. the score. As Matt Graham goes into the corner, they keep it deep into the icebreaker's end. Matt Graham right back to Zolkanish, a nice touch pass there. Excuse me, that's Sokol. Vartianen, who scored the third goal for the Prowlers, one of the most beautiful goals we've seen all season, a highlight real goal there. As he gets poked away, now Horvath tries to get it up and deep, but it won't be able to get to Fowler. Fowler scoring the lone goal for the Icebreakers. He's scoring two of three this weekend, as Sokol has it. He's trying to get it up to Graham, but he'll leave it for Vartianen. Vartianen dumps it in deep. Graham gets it behind the net. Puck under the skate there of Horvath. It slips over to Graham. Federally fighting for it. He chips it high off the glass. Graham racing after it, but picked up first there was Jurevic. Puck goes way in deep. Paulin elects to play it. Passes it up to Austin Federley. The line's been out there for a minute as Graham and Federley come off the ice. Portillo, Giuliano, and Moroso come out. And a shot there from center ice goes to Paulin. He'll cover it up. 17-47 here to go in the third period. It's 4-1 to one, your Prowler's lead. Boy, it's been kind of a wide open period to start, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, kind of the opposite of what we thought. We're going to kind of sit back, but no, both teams playing in open ice. And yeah, the icebreakers are stretching the ice. If you can see, they're sending that forward. He's taking yep. off as soon as the defense get pressure or get possession of that puck. Well, you kind of have to take risk when you're down three goals in the third period as over the line comes Moroso. Moroso leaving it for Portillo. Portillo along the boards there. Moroso picks it up. 
Trying to get it over to Giuliano. Puck comes into the neutral zone. Young will pick it up in his own zone. Dalton Young goes around the defender. Gives a nice rink wide pass to Portillo. Portillo retreats at the right wing circle. Backhanded attempts cut off there. That was Newberg. Uh oh, two on he, one. Yep, here comes Morrow back to Pastuka. Pastuka makes a move, shot just slides right in. It's 4 2. Icebreakers are down. And there is the disadvantage of coming out of the net. When you get beat, not much you can do. Yeah, usually on that two on one, the goaltender will take the shooter. Yep. Okay, and then the defenseman will take the pass. And there was some type of miscommunication there as Pastuka took the puck and he was still able to cut over. Yeah. Um, goaltender's out, takes the shooter, defenseman takes the pass, and we're all set. But Pastuka, give him credit, made a nice play, made a really, really nice move. Pastuka, a big part of that championship team last year for the Carolina Thunderbirds. That was playing all right for the Columbus River Dragons this year before being traded for Parker Moscow. He makes it four to two. Now the Prowlers have a little bit of problem on their hands as Morrow keeps it in the zone. Icebreaker's playing with some life. They could use another deflator goal here. As last time the Prowler, or excuse me, the Icebreakers made it a two goal game. Mike Moroso extended the lead to four to one with a beautiful shot. And you know, Brady, that's why we talked at the, the start of the period about taking nothing for granted. You know, you might have a lead, but you just got to keep playing. You got to play for three periods. You can't worry about the next night. You got to go out and you got to get the points when yep. they're available. And if you start to lay back, um, look what happens. It's a four to two game now. Yeah, exactly right. Plenty of time, 1647 showing on the scoreboard here in McMorn Arena. We are on EBW TV. I'm Brady Beaton, joined by Roger Beaton here as the icebreakers have it in the zone. Fowler back in deep. Being pinned up against the boards by Parsons. Pass out in front won't go anywhere. Citrone chasing after it, but it'll end up on the stick of Steele first. Over to Danny Luck. Danny Luck sh shoots it up and it's tipped in by an icebreaker. Paulin will get it to the opposite corner. Prowler's trying to get it up to Jay Dalton. Jay was looking to leak out. That's something he does well. Is his, he's a slippery player. Pass goes across all can and gets a stick on it, but it goes up into the netting and ends up stuck up there. I don't think that one's coming down. Is that on top of the stanchion? <laughs> I'm not really sure, but it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Oh, there it oh, goes. It goes to a lucky here. fan in one of the suites. That was impressive. Stood up on its side on a stanchion. Fan gets a nice souvenir. 10th anniversary pucks for the FHL or the FPHL, whatever they're deciding to call it now. In their own zone is Horvath. Parsons keeps it in the zone. Parsons ships it up to Federley. Federley in deep. Sokol has it now. Sokol goes down. No call there. Graham turns around, fires it around. Federley now behind the net. Tries to pass it out, it's picked up there by Sokol. Sokol in the blue, but can't find the back of the net. Going the other way of the icebreaker, Stuart Dan over to Horvath. Horvath over the blue line, shot blocked by Larry Vartiainen. Federley takes it over the blue line. Across the rink he goes, shot there, tipped by Graham, pass back out in front. A no-look pass from Matt Graham, almost was on it. And Sokol's going at it with Crawford. Getting in the way is Newberg. Bobby Sokol showing a little bit of fire. Haven't seen that for him and him in a Prowler's uniform. You know, the, the intensity's picked up in this period. You could see right from the drop of the puck that, you know, the icebreakers came out. They came out with intensity. Yep. They're moving the puck. They came out with some urgency where the Prowlers have kind of sit back a little bit. They had a nice scoring opportunity that time, but they need to keep that up. Now, if I'm, if I think if Joe Pace was playing tonight, this would be about the time he would try to do something to get his team fired up. Maybe try to drop the gloves, get the crowd into it. Similar to like a manager taking an ejection in a baseball game, doing something to kind of wake up his players, because he's done that before. You know, Brady? Shot there from Pastuka from point blank is saved. We'll get a whistle. For some reason, when Joe Pace plays, I think of the movie Slapshot because of his personality, the things that he does. I, I just so many quotes from Slapshot come yeah. to mind when I see Joe Pace out well, there the playing his is, game. Most of the time, it's calculated. Yes, it like, is calculated. Like, <laughs> sometimes it looks like he just loses his mind, and to be fair to him, he does. He does. But, <laughs> but a lot of the time, a Slapshot there is saved by Paulin. 
a lot of the time, he has reasons behind it. He's trying to get his team fired up. He's trying to protect a teammate. As now we will get a whistle there. Yeah, I think he closed his hand on the Oh, uh, there the we puck. go. No, they're going to get a penalty call. Yeah, that's a penalty. He looked like a, uh, a receiver yeah. driving for a ball in the end zone. You're like, not happy with it. Again. He's trying to say he just set it down. <laughs> You go to box, you feel shame. Yes, go to box, feel shame, Stefan Jurevic. Now the Prowlers have a chance to get <laughs> get, get a th three-goal lead here, two minutes on the board. Boy, this would be a good time for the Prowlers to regain momentum yep. of this game. Make a statement here, and that's definitely a penalty. Yes. He closed his hand on the puck um, for several seconds. And that's kind of one of those that as a referee, I feel like you'd have to take a second like, oh yeah, that is a penalty because you don't call that often. Like it's one of those like uh, similar to off a of face off, hand pass off a of face off. It's one of those you go, oh yeah, that's right. You can't but do that. You know officials, they take pride in making that one call yes, you don't ev see. Everyone seems to have their one thing as the puck's in the corner and goes over to Graham. Graham trying to get over to Contrado. Contrado back to Graham. Graham left wing circle. He's taking it in closer. Leaves it back there. That was Moroso, Moroso. In front of that, he shoots, it's tipped out in front. It goes over to Vartiainen. Yeah, Vartiainen, it's all Canis, Moroso, Contrado, and Graham out there on the power play. Minute and a half left, 14.38 to go. Shot there from Vartiainen. And it was, went up and out. Boy, I, I find it interesting at this stage in the game, you know, the, uh, the um, icebreakers, yeah. Uh, they're penalty kill. They're just sitting back and letting the Prowlers do whatever they want. You know, they need to make something happen, even on this penalty kill. But to give, you know, the Prowlers that much time, yep. it just I think it's a recipe for disaster. It is, and the Prowlers have kind of what you need to do on the penalty kill. I can cite a couple times. Last year's playoffs, Dalton Jay scored a huge shorthanded goal against Carolina to tie it up. They ultimately lost the game, but it was the game-tying goal at the time. It was right there they tried to get it up oh. to Fowler, but the pass had way too much steam on it. And Paul will send it to the corner. Varchiani will pick it up. In the shootout win we referenced earlier in the broadcast, a big shorthanded goal both games. I think Graham had one. Portillo may have had the others. Moroso, left wing circle now has it. Pass across rink wide. It goes under the stick of Barciani. 54 seconds left to go in the man advantage. 14 minutes left in the period. Zolkanich net battling out in front. Horvath trying to get the puck. But Moroso sticks it back to Zolkanich. Zolkanich around to Contrado. Back to Zolkanich. Moroso. Shot there. Gets lifted way up and out. Almost hits the Germain sign. Goes all the way up into section two as some kids will race after it. That was a three-point field goal there, Brady. It was, that one, that almost hit the rafters. <laughs> yeah, up there, row F. <laughs> but uh, you notice that McClendon is going down. Anything in tight, he's going down, and what that's causing the Prowlers to do is to try and shoot upstairs. Yep. He's leaving the top of that net open on anything in tight. And I know a lot of Prowlers like to go top shelf as Dalton Jay has it right back to Federley. Federley shot there, it's up for the score! I believe that was Justin Portillo tips the shot from Austin Federley, and the power play goal gives the Prowlers a 5-2 lead. And Bobby Sokol's going to lead it. I think they're going to talk about this, Brady. What, high stick? I think they're going to look at a high stick. I don't think he didn't signal goal yet. It was a great tip, but they're discussing it down there. I think this one might be coming off the board. No goal, the second disallowed goal of the night. I just had a feeling, the way the official watched that puck and watched the play, oh boy, I'd have to see that one again because that was awful close. Fans but, voicing their displeasure, and I don't blame them. The second disallowed goal of the night. The first one was absolutely just awful. And now the draw will come all the way back down to the Prowlers' end. Six goals have been scored by the Prowlers. However, only four have counted as the puck goes to the stick of that was Perks and it sends it behind Paulin. Well, we've got to make the best of this. And the Prowlers need to come out and put some pressure on, maybe get There's another Dalton goal. There's Dalton Jay putting some pressure on, but he just can't get, get the puck on the tape. He's behind the net now chasing after it is Sokol. Sokol behind the net. 
Six sec seconds left to go on the man advantage. Jay gets over to Young. Young tries to go around a couple defenders. Left wing circle for Young. Takes it around the net. Pass out in front. Oh, he had a great opportunity to Sokol. They're chasing after it. Paula coming way out of the net to play it. And he'll send it over to Federley. That's a very risky play there for Chris Pollan. But I absolutely love it. Goaltender can be uh, just like another defenseman back yep. there. He played the puck well, he moved it, and we got it out of the zone. That's a really, really nice play. It is, but it, there is a big risk to it, but it was oh, a nice yeah. play. Sokol takes it, goes around to the fender. Slap shot there from Sokol is blocked by Crawford. Ooh, that hurt Crawford, but what a heck of a play. It did, yeah. I mean, you lay your body out there. Sokol has the puck now in the corner. Tips it back to Portillo. Keenan just let that pass go to Portillo. A little bit surprising, letting Portillo control it behind the net. I don't know if he's tired. He didn't really want to get bodied up by Justin Portillo, but he just let that one go. Pass up to Parsons now. Gets it to the neutral zone. 12 minutes left to go in the period. Mike Moroso loses the handle on it, but Parsons keeps it in. Parsons in the corner to Moroso. Battling with it with Perks. It is four to two here in McMoran Arena. Prowlers just had a disallowed power play goal, a tip in off an Austin Federley shot, called no goal for high sticking, the second disallowed goal of the evening. Brady, I'm gonna say you didn't agree with that call. I did not agree with that call. Well, I'm really still upset about the first one. That one yeah, I'd have to I, see again. I agree 100% with you. Because from our angle, that. you can't really see if it's above the crossbar or not. So that one, you know what, that's a 50-50 call. That's a judgment call. I'm not going to kill him for that. But the first one was just bad as Parsons takes a shot and it gets deflected. Out in front there, backhand attempt, and still loose out in front. Shot there from Parsons, it goes behind the net. Mike Moroso has it in the corner. He gets knocked off the puck by Farrington. Farrington boxes him out and gets it up to Berger. And without the, they don't have video review, a shot that goes up and over the crossbar. So they have to make a split-second decision there. That's Absolutely. a tough one. High stick is a tough one to call. I'll give them a little bit of leeway on that. Boy, but that first one is still, should never have been disallowed. Austin Federley just got whacked. I don't know if you saw that. By number yeah, and he's giving it to the official. He should be because he got whacked right across the hands and there was no call. I don't know why, but it seems that out of all the prowlers, all the uh, Federley still upset. He should be. That hurts. Uh, yes, that hurts it does. When you get whacked across the hands. Out of all the uh, uh, prowlers, it seems like Austin Federley gets the most no call slashes, and I don't know why. Bartianen takes it into the zone, tries to get it in deep. Like I swear, every other weekend, Federley shoots and it goes wide of the net. That would have been justice. It would have been. And Graham getting thrown around a little bit, puck going sliding all the way back to Paulin. But it seems like every other weekend, Federley will take a stick to the hands that the referees just let go. Just let go. And I don't know why. <laughs> it just seems like he's a magnet for him. <laughs> Backhanded pass from Newberg gets tipped. So then he just goes out and gets, what, three hat tricks this year? Yeah, he's had three hat tricks in about mm, a five week span. I guess that's playing over it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's, yeah, we talked about it before. He had a natural hat trick last night as he sends it deep into the zone off the high glass. 9.51 here to go. Next whistle will likely be a timeout. This has been a pretty fast-paced period. Zolkanich gets oh. run into by Crawford. <laughs> Zolkanich just little boyed Isaiah Crawford. Into the zone of Citrone. Dalton Jay turns around and throws it on net. I don't think Isaiah Crawford knew what he was running into. No, Crawford's a tough player. I've seen him come out this period, though, and take hits and throw his body. And yeah. He well, he, is, he he's tried, selling out. He tried to throw the body on Zolkanich. Yeah, that's And it's like he hit a brick wall. Dalton J along the hash marks. Pass to Young, and Young goes down. That's going to be interference, and they actually call it this time. Stuart Dant throws a big hit on Dalton Young. Puck was about two feet behind Young. Yeah, that's a definite interference call. They had to call that. That was right in front of the referee. 9.07 here to go. Boy, you know, with just like you said, 9.07 to go and to put your team in that situation down by two goals, boy, that's tough. It is. It really is. It's kind of a selfish play here as we go to our media timeout. Probably will get a chance to set up.
their power play. And other scores from around the Fed. Battle Creek and Columbus are still tied at three aside. Pfeiffer scored his second goal in as many nights. Danbury's now up 2 nothing on Delaware. And in New York, the game is tied at one aside between the Watertown Wolves and the Elmira Enforcers. And we have no score from Illinois, where the Carolina Thunderbirds are taking on the Danville Dashers. So let's see who the Prowlers send out here. It's going to be, they have six guys on the ice. Someone didn't get the memo. That would be Dalton Young. He's coming back to the bench. So we have Portillo, Sokol, Jay, Federley, and Parsons. Parsons does a good job kind of getting the puck to where it needs to go. Kind of quarterbacks the power play, finds the scorers. Sokol's found a nice roll in Portillo. Portillo does a great job creating space there with his big body. As the puck horseshoes all the way around. Shots 34-28 in favor of the Prowlers. Their second power play line now. Federley will horseshoe it around. Portillo going to the corner to get it. He run, tries to run through Keenan. He spins off it. He's over to Sokol. Sokol along the right hash marks. Over to Federley at the point. Federley stick handling. Pass over to Jay. Jay takes it, taking his time. Pass out in front there. Trying to get poked in was Brian Parsons. Gets rattled around. Boy, I really like the idea of using Federley on the point mm -hmm. uh, on the power play. You know, he's a good quarterback back there. Good hands. He sees the ice. He, he looks for the open and an man. Offsides call. I think that's a really smart move using him back there. It is. Brian Parsons has a few words for the linesman as he comes off to the bench. So now we'll have Graham, Zolkanich, Moroso, Contrado, and Bartiainen. Same kind of role, Zach Zolkanich is the space creator, trying to get time and space for his players. Moroso's just the shot like Jay is. And Graham is the playmaker at forward. Bartianen has a beautiful slap shot. And shot there, oh. but close. Zach Zolkanich, the light went on for a second. He was expecting a goal. Bartianen coming back to it. You know, Brady, I still flinch a little bit when I see that goal light go on. A little PTSD Yeah, it still up. makes me shake a little bit. And I noticed you turned around when you saw it come did, on. Did you notice that? I did. <laughs> that wakes me up at night. It does. 38 seconds left to go in the man advantage for the Prowlers. But McClendon just made the heck of a save he right did. there. Kept his, game in the, kept his team in the game. That was a great save. Zocanich was wide open. He's like a road grader out there, isn't he? He just yeah. creates space. He does. Him and Portillo do a really good job of getting guys out of the way and displacing defenders. As the icebreakers win the draw and a shot right off the draw will go into the net and will redo the faceoff. Since we got a little break here, can I get a, a shout out to Columbus, Ohio? Yeah, what? Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, a buddy of mine who's listening. Yeah, go ahead. All right, just want to say hi to Killer. How you doing out there, Killer? Doing all right because the ice is fine here in McMorrin. Yeah, there's now a 10 foot patch that's down to the concrete. Moroso taking it up and over the blue line here. He's trying to make a move. Shoots there. And a nice save by McClendon. He tried to go short side, but McClendon did a good job hugging the post. 22 seconds left to go in the man advantage. 729 left in the third period. You know, you, you had said it earlier, Brady, those two goals that McClendon let in, you know, you can always look back and yep. shoulda, woulda, coulda, but it'd be a, a tie hockey game right now. Yeah, I mean, then, but on the flip side of that, you can say if they allow both the goals, it's 6-2. to two. Yeah, you're exactly so, right. Zach Zolkanich takes a, I think that was a pass that got deflected. Eight seconds left to go on the power play. They'll send it in deep. Icebreakers will kill it. Pollen will field a ground ball there like a shortstop. 7.07 left to go in the game, and we have five on five hockey. Shots 36 28 in favor of the Prowlers. Bartiainen, throw it in deep. It doesn't get tipped, and it'll be icing. 6.56 to go in an offensive zone draw upcoming for the men are ice break. And you know, you, you can look at that several different ways. You know, he gave up two goals that were. were you know, what we classify as easy goals. Yeah. But, you know, he made some big saves to keep him in the game as That's well. True. And that, again, is all just part of being a goaltender. Um, you know, 
people tend to notice the mistakes more. Yep. But boy, did he make some great saves to keep the score where it's at. So yeah. it's just all part of being being in that position. And that's why with sports, as a shot comes there, it gets blocked by Barty Einan. You can play the what if game till the cows come home. Absolutely. But you're dealing reality, and the reality is the Prowlers right now are up four to two, looking to win their second game in as many nights as Giuliano has it along his own blue line. He'll send it back in his own zone where Barty Einan will get it up there. That's the Trone. Pastuka now on his own blue line. Sends it up to Moro. Oh, he almost split the defense there. He almost got between Easterbrook and Young. Little miscommunication there. They were split very wide. Yeah, they were split wide. And uh, that pass is on the stick. Boy, he's walking in all alone. Chris Paulin has 27 saves on 29 shots, while Frankie McClendon for the Icebreakers has 32 saves on 36 shots. Matt Graham wins the draw. Goes to Easterbrook. Fowler now has it. He scored the first goal. He shoots and it's covered up by Paulin. Good job dropping down and controlling that rebound. You know, and the icebreakers are doing the right thing right now. They're, they're throwing everything at the net. So you got to do. You got six minutes to score two goals. Only good things happen when you throw the puck at the net. Make the, the goalie make the save. Make the defenseman clear the rebound. It's a good, good strategy right now. Throw the puck at the net. Dalton Young gets it up to Matt Graham, who leaves it there. Bobby Sogol takes it up over the line. Pass to Federley. Federley goes around to the man and can't quite get there. Oh, it's tipped out in front by Sokol. He almost had a nice tip in from the top of the crease, but it won't go. 6.03 left to go. It's still a 4-2 hockey game. Boy, some end-to-end -end action here lately. It has been. It's well, opened up. Prowlers are trying to take advantage of the icebreakers getting more aggressive, while yeah. really, I mean, the icebreakers have to be more aggressive, so Prowlers trying to get behind the defense. You're 100% correct. You know, you're going to see odd man rushes because the uh, icebreakers have to press. At this point in the game, they got to take chances. Their D have to pinch. Matt Graham falls down off the draw. Federally plin steal to the boards. In the corner now. You have Steele. Graham over to Federley. Federley, a slap shot there off the shoulder of McClendon into the stand. Federley goes down off the shot. Couldn't pick the top left corner. He tried, though. 5.45 here to go. Nice pass. I don't know who passed it out of the corner to him. Might have been was Graham, nice I play. think. I think you're right. I think it was Graham. Another goal right here, obviously, would be huge. Would all but put a nail, the final nail in the coffin as Steele takes it off the draw. Steele in the corner, fighting for it. Young does a good job knocking that puck out of midair. But in comes Stuart Dant. He's going with Newberg. Stuart Dant's shot goes way wide. Good defense from Rob Easterbrook. Citrone goes over there. Don't Young takes a spill. Pass out in front there. Easterbrook gets in the way. Young over to Jay. Jay into the neutral zone. Oh, Jay gets pinned into the How's board. that not interference? He didn't have the puck. And now the puck goes out of the out of play. And will it be delay a game? You know, I'm going to vent for just a second Go here, ahead. Brady, if you don't mind. That puck is thrown into the zone. The defenseman makes no move to go get the puck. Our forward's trying to skate around him. Yep. Puck's in the corner. Oh, we do get two minutes for delay a game, so there's oh, a penalty well, the delay either game. way. But, but how is that not interference? I've never understood that. The puck's nowhere around, but yet the defenseman's taking the He's forward out of the, the play. He's the progress of the forward. I, I, I guess that's a rule I don't know. Thank, thanks for letting me bend Go a little ahead. bit. Go it's what, ahead. It's what we're here for is the Prowlers have another opportunity. A Bad time for a penalty. He's in close as Matt Graham. Matt Graham in the crease. It's, it's loose. It goes to the corner. And the net comes off the moorings as there's a dog pile in the blue crease. Not a good time to take a penalty if you're the icebreakers down two with five minutes basically takes off just under half the clock you have left Volkanich can't win the draw Moro trying to be aggressive on the PK as Horvath gets it in deep Contrato takes it Contrato over to Barty Einan 
Prowlers don't have to be super aggressive on this power play. They can just try to kill some clock as Vartiana takes it in deep. Now the left wing circle, he turns around. No one pressuring Vartiana, he's just stick handling. He'll leave it for his teammate Mike Moroso. Now back to Graham. Pass over to Vartiana, he wants to get a slap shot off from the point. Pass over to Matt Graham, oh he would have had a little bit of space to make a nice shot. Contrado. Gets it stolen, and Morrow will take it in the zone. He tries to go around Contrado. Puck slides harmlessly into the glove of Paulin, and he'll let the clock keep running. 60 seconds left to go in the Prowler's penalty. Boy, that's nice work by Morrow. He's working his butt off out there on the penalty kill. He's got to he, try to make something happen. Absolutely, and that was all individual effort right there. Jay all the way up to Portillo, and he'll tip it way up into the, just over the glass now into the corner. But you know, Morrow was at the end of his shift. Yep. He had been out there for so long. Um, he was busting his butt. For him to, to almost get a scoring opportunity, boy, you know, he's not quitting. No, no, and four or two, a team that's been down on their luck their last 10 games. This I is like an that. opportunity they have. You're exactly right. Federally now out there on the power play. I think play. that shows a lot of character. Fowler gets it back to Farrington. Farrington over the blue line. Parsons cuts him off. Shot there goes wide off the pad. Farrington tries to, tries to knock it out of the air. Jay, now in the icebreaker zone, goes harmlessly into the trapper of McClendon. 3.38 to go, 23 seconds left to go in the five on four. Yeah, taking a penalty at this time in the game. Uh, I believe it was a delay of game penalty, yes. wasn't it, Brady? I'll double check to make sure that was the official call but I believe so to put your team down in a four to two game that's tough that's a tough yep tough delay penalty. a game off the draw Keenan takes it banks it off the boards up to Stuart Dan no. 15 seconds left to go in the penalty for the icebreakers over the line now Newberg shot goes wide of the net six seconds left to go in the Prowlers man advantage Sokol gets it across to Federley. Federley chips it in deep. So for the final 3-10, we should have five on five hockey barring a penalty. Federley, shot there, goes off the pad and goes wide. So now at what point do you pull the goalie? Down two goals, three minutes left to go. Uh, anytime you can, you get possession of oh, the Oh, and we have a penalty coming. Portillo going at it with Keenan. Portillo not happy. That was well behind the play, Brady. I didn't. I just noticed the arm up and then the whistle. Portillo's going to give them the man advantage. Yeah, I figured the goaltender was on his way to the bench. So now, uh, do you do it right off the, the, the draw? You well, win you, the draw. You have to, don't you? Yeah, you get the puck in deep. You want to get your goalie out. You know, create a five on, well, six on four situation here. Um, you know, because you don't have too much time left in the game. Oh, they're giving him four minutes. Well, there you go. The rest of the game, you're going to be shorthanded. You know, by yeah. the goal. Four minutes for Justin Portillo. I think that extra shove at the end probably earned him the extra two. All right, 2.53 to go. Prowlers will likely be shorthanded. And it, wow, what a shot from Dalton Young. He <laughs> that almost put that bar down from the other end of the ice. He almost went 180 feet. You know, it doesn't look like the icebreakers are even thinking about getting their goalie no, out of the net. No, he's just sitting right back. Right now, as soon as I get him the puck, I'm telling him to come off the ice. You gotta sell out. You need to score before two minutes is up on this Portillo penalty. But Boy, they're just gonna sit back as Moroso pokes it away. Perks has it. And now McClendon isn't really worried about getting out of, the, out of his crease. Ian Duncan is not looking over at him. Two oh, minutes left to go in the game. Danny Luck has it. 3-10 left to go to shot. There's blockered away by Paulin. Well, I don't know if Ian Duncan's waiting to see if they score a goal or not. But I don't know, but you got to sell out. It's time to burn the boats. I agree. This is a perfect opportunity to get Barrington. your goalie out. Oh, now it. McClendon's starting to edge out of his crease, and McClendon's going to the, going to the bench. 145 left to go. It's going to be six on four hockey as Dalton Young knocks down Danny Luck. So Canis chips it up and into the Prowler's bench. That won't be a delay of game. It went into the bench. So my question to you is, Brady, um, 
why do you wait till a minute 45 to pull I your goalie? I don't know what changed. Why did Ian Duncan wait? All of a sudden, the goalie came out, but... Maybe he wanted to see if he could score a quick goal. I don't know. Maybe he saw a tendency that he thought he could exploit, but I don't know why wait the extra minute 20. Yeah, I don't either, because you'd have a two-man advantage for almost three and a half minutes. Yeah. And you're down by two goals. And if you score, you and know, you really you're still need got to the score in the next 43 seconds. Yes, absolutely. Because then you can have still a six on four to get the game, the tying goal. Interesting strategy. I'd like to, to know what the thought process is behind that. Duncan drawing up something for his other power play line as the icebreakers win the draw. Newberg has it. It's being, being jockeyed for as it goes around the boards. 128 left to go. Don't Jay. Oh, he almost got around the man. He could have put the, the dagger in the heart of the icebreakers. Danny Luck. Up there to Fowler. Fowler, left wing circle. Leaves it back. But that's right to Matt Graham. Matt Graham tries to throw it in deep, but it's caught in the neutral zone by Steele. 113 left to go. 15 seconds left to go on the first minor penalty to Justin Portillo. As Moore goes around, he takes down a linesman. Graham pinned to the boards. One minute left to go in the game. Prowler's up 4-2. to two. Shoveled over to Horvath, but it's cut off by Bartianen. Horvath, shot or a pass? Not sure. Pass over there. Pass from Steele. Left wing circle, shot. There goes in front of the net. 46 seconds left to go in the game. Pucks that neutral ice. McClendon's been out for over a minute now. Six on four hockey. Offsides is called, and it'll come all the way back to the far side of neutral ice. Boy, you notice Brady on that power play. If you're on the right side of the goalie, you cannot miss wide of the net. No. Because that just breaks There's the puck no out. Rebound. It just comes around the zone, you know, around the boards and out of the zone. They're going to put back in the net temporarily. Yeah. Boy, missing wide on that shot there, that just kills your power play. At least try to generate a rebound. Absolutely. Five on four now that McClendon's back in the net. Pucks won. The draw is one, and McClendon's taking his sweet time getting back to the bench. He will. Pastuka going around a defender. Pastuka tries a backhanded attempt, and it gets knocked away by Varchian. And 28 seconds left to go. Shot there, loose out front. Ferrington had an opportunity and won't go. Zolkanich so turns and fires. It's Ferrington, and they score. Zolkanich so turned and fired. It hit Nate Ferrington, and putting it in the back of the net was Dominic Horvath. Can you believe that? Zolkanich well, turned and just, he, he fired it as hard as he could and it hits a skate and stops yep. dead. Doesn't go anywhere, just stops. And, and they were able to put the puck in the back of the net. And Portillo's still in the box, he should be coming out. Yeah, he'll be coming out now. Are they gonna let him out? They have five guys on the ice. There yeah, we go, he, okay. Uh, 23 seconds left, probably just have to hold on for just under half a minute. And they're going to try and get McClendon out as soon as possible. McClendon, yeah, he's about at the hash marks now. The Prowlers get a quick win. Austin Federley possesses the That's puck, 18 huge seconds. Win. He dumps it in deep. Icebreaker's going to have to get a really quick rush. Gets up to Morrow. Morrow, 12 seconds left to go in the game. Stuart Dan has it, nine seconds. Up to Horvath, over the line, seven. Shot there, it's covered up by Paulin. 4.4 to go. Again, Paul and being aggressive, coming yeah. out of his net, making that an easy save. It hit him right in the breadbasket, and the reason it did is because he was out of his net. Time out here from the icebreakers. You know, and again, obviously you're gonna send your best face-off guys yep. out here, and it's just such an important win here. Well, you, gotta, you know the Prowlers are gonna try to tie up the face-off. Absolutely. They're not gonna try to win it clean. Right. Just don't let the other guy win that face off. Looks like you got Matt Graham there, the assistant coach directing traffic on the timeout along with Chris Paulin. Well, well, go ahead. I was gonna say, we might wanna mention too that Ian Duncan was a former uh, Bowling Green Falcon. Yeah, you played against him back in your in your playing yeah, days. Yeah, he was on our uh, arrival list. Yes. You know, playing Bean Ohio schools, Ohio State playing yep. Bowling Green, that was always a rivalry. Um, you know, we had Zamboni drivers I was dress say, up. Was he on the team when uh, on the delay? Yeah, yeah. Would, would he have been in that game? Zamboni drivers wearing tuxedos and cutting holes in the ice. 
Yeah, he would have been. No, I think he might have graduated. Before that um, point. By then. Yeah, he, right. he was a pro. So. All right. Ian Duncan trying to draw something up for his team. They have 4.4 seconds to at least try and steal a point. Perks in the circle for the Icebreakers. Graham will do it for the Prowlers. Graham will tie it up. Newberg tries to shoot. Fortiana nice. takes it into the corner. Prowlers are going to win 4-3. to three. Nice win. A gutty win for the Prowlers. Didn't come as easy as they would have wanted to, but it doesn't matter. A 4-3 win for the Port here on Prowlers gives them six points in two games. And now they don't have much time to enjoy it as they'll have a three o'clock game tomorrow against the Danville Dashers. Well, this game did come without a little bit of a controversy as you had two goals disallowed for the Prowlers and the four goals that were scored, you had Dalton Young, you had Brandon Contrato, you had Mike Moroso, and Larry Vartiani with the highlight real goal. Chris Paulin had 32 saves on the night. The Port here on Prowlers are gonna come away with this with a 4-3 win. A fun game nonetheless. Yeah, this was a very enjoyable game. And you know, we knew coming out in the third period, the icebreakers were not gonna lay down and they didn't. No. They uh, yeah, they showed a lot of pride, a lot of heart, a lot of character, but this is a big, big win yep. for the Prowlers, especially going into that contest tomorrow. Yep. Um, they needed these points. A game, uh, two goals disallowed and a goal in the last minute to make it interesting for the icebreakers. But ultimately it is a 4-3 victory for your port here on Prowlers. Well, thank you for joining us here on EBW TV. It's been a fun one. Jeremy should be back tomorrow night. Hopefully he's feeling better. But thank you for joining me in the booth. I've been Brady Beaton, my color commentator, Roger Beaton. And it's been a fun one. Well, we hope you have a good night. Thank you for joining us. And go Prowlers. We'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. right here on EBW TV.